Horton, and tonight we have two of the richest programs in the history of black college football. 23 black college football national championships between Tennessee State and Grambling. They've got historical coaches, the, the uh, legendary Eddie Robinson, along with Big John Merritt. Grambling and Tennessee State, when it comes to black college football, there are no two bigger names. And Stan Luter, who is joining me now to call the game tonight, what do you think of this matchup? I am so excited about this. You talked about the color and the pageantry, the history of Grambling. Grambling and Tennessee State just puts goosebumps on you. And two great coaches, two great quarterbacks can hardly wait. And it's a very important game for Tennessee State. They are one and two. They have struggled at the quarterback position, but they have some serious weapons on offense. Yeah, they really do. They, they're a team that likes to play 50-50 pass run. They can do that. And they're no better receiver than C.J. Johnson. 217 yards. He's closing in on 2,000 yards for a career on 11 receptions. A fantastic receiver. Two times OVCU all-conference player. You're going to enjoy watching watching C.J. Johnson. And then there's my main man, Tremont Douglas of Grambling State. All of the guys that you see in the NFL, they have a hero. His hero is Scotty Anderson from Grambling just two years ago. A great receiver, a tough kid. He'll make the hard catch. Doug Williams said, hey, he is smooth. Well, the starting quarterback for Tennessee State is a redshirt freshman by the name of Bryson Rosser. He'll be on the hot seat. We're coming up with the kickoff. Coming up next. The Super Dollar Classic is brought to you by Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. Cold, down, easy. Las Vegas. When Vegas calls, will you be ready? 1-800-CALL-ATT. Just dial down the center with 1-800-CALL-ATT for all your collect calls. It's free for you and cheap for them. The JW Marriott Las Vegas Resort, Spa and Golf. An oasis of luxury just minutes from the action of the Strip. And by Ford, proud sponsor of the ultimate Black College Road Trip 2, featuring the 2003 Ford Expedition. And welcome back. We are ready for kickoff. Tennessee State actually going to kick it off to Grambling. And back for the Grambling Tigers, Octavius Bond, who is very quick. You take a look at the head coach for Tennessee State, James Reese. Talked about in the pregame show how he turned around the program. They were 3-8 and eight two years ago. And last year he got them to 8-3. and three. His theme coming into this season was to finish it. They've gotten off to a little bit of a rough start, but they believe they are better than a 1-2 and two football team. Team. We get set for kickoff. Joey Hudak will be kicking it off. And we talked about Octavius Bonds and DJ Clay, who Doug Williams really likes. Fours like kickoff coming up here in seconds. Hudak gets a foot into it, and Octavius Bonds will take it from about the eight-yard line. Crossing the 25-yard line, and he's brought down there, and now we will see the uh, Grambling State offense come on. Fred Wicker made that tackle, and here you see, uh, there you see Octavius Bonds, who's an outstanding defensive back, actually a, a transfer from Kentucky. And on comes the Grambling State offensive unit. Led by their quarterback, Bruce Eugene, got off to a rough start against McNeese State. You'll see a lot of the no-huddle offense in black college football. They like to keep the pace going. Well, I'll tell you what you're going to see also is Bruce Eugene, a kid that, that's only made three starts going into the night. Tremendous arm, learning the system. Doug Williams said he has the potential to be one of the better quarterbacks in Grambling history. They start with a running game. Maybe a yard. Carol Charles, Quentin Payne made the tackle for Tennessee State. Now let's take a look at the Coors Light starting lineup. Carol Charles, Jason Arrington, Calvin Colquitt, Tremont Douglas, and Gershon Jesse, the big tight end. James Bryce Wright Riley, an Oakville tree, they call him tree on that offensive line.
part of what Greenwood does, Doug, you see him already spreading two wide receivers. Look, isolation is set. We'll see right now what kind of formation Greenwood is going to give you. They'll make adjustments to look for passes. Eugene going upstairs. He had a man, but the pass a little off the mark. He was looking for Calvin Colquitt. Scott Cunningham was out on the coverage. As we take a look at the Coors Light starting line, uh, starting lineups on the defensive line. Keith Rogers, Hilton Horn, Manny Robles, along with uh, Brian Harris at that defensive end position. The linebackers, Marty Weaver, Jermaine Beal, who's the best of the bunch, and B.J. Fletcher, Cunningham, Giddens, Rahman, and Safiula. Third down, they'll go out of the shotgun. Eugene can't handle the snap, eludes the pressure, fires a pass and complete. It's Cole Quinn. He's got a first down as he crosses the 40 yard line. Safiula out on the coverage. And we talked about the poise and the, and the respect what you can from uh, my man Eugene. Bad snap, uh, able to get away from defenders. Tennessee's not a good job of tackling. And then putting the ball on the mark to Calvin Colquitt. Colquitt with the good catch and then taking it down for a Grambling first down. And Doug Williams said, yeah, fellas, that's the way to go. That's the way to go. So they move the change to the 37-yard line. Eugene again out of the shotgun. He's got five wide receivers. 13-20 left to go. DJ Clay will take the handoff. The Tennessee State snuffs it out. Bryce Smith made the tackle. Lost four yards on that play. Both teams, as you can expect, coming out here. The people of Las Vegas are very excited about this football game. Both Grambling and Tennessee State. A lot of the guys know each other. Little nerves right now. You can expect that. But what I like about Grambling, very poised right now. Bad snap. Doesn't mess up Eugene. They make a first down. This time, Clay fumbles his feet a little bit, but still able to pick up a couple of yards. Made something out of nothing on that last play. So it seems like the offensive coordinator, Melvin Spears, likes that shotgun. Eugene again, quick pass out in the flat and complete. It's Douglas tried to elude a tackler, but finally brought down by Scott Cunningham. Well, you may mention Darren a second ago of being able to come out of the shotgun, and one of the advantages of the shotgun, it allows Bruce Eugene a couple of extra seconds to look over the defense. That time he gets it. Good job by the offensive line of Grambling. A little pressure, gets hit after the play, but Eugene stays in there and watches to see if the ball is complete and a good pass. And there's my main man, James Reese. James Reese, in his third year, played here at Tennessee State. Third down and seven for the Tigers of Grambling State. Again, a low snap, again a quick pass, but this time knocked away by Scott Cunningham. He had six uh, pass breakups last week in that loss to Jackson State. It'll bring up fourth down. A guy that's got great speed, 5'10", junior, excellent cover corner. They really liked it. But again, the second time in possession where Lance Wright wasn't able to get the ball back to uh, Cunningham, to uh, Eugene. Watch that low snap. Eugene, again, does a good job in handling poise to get that nine Nice pass, but you can see my man Cunningham comes in and makes a good deflection. And I liked how he did it with the inside hand, staying away from a possible pass interference. Well, check this out. They're going to bring in Brian Morgan and attempt a 51-yard field goal. This would actually be a new Grambling record. That's a strong leg. Well, he missed completely, muffs that one. And the ball is still alive. It's a live ball. It's a live I ball. believe that Tennessee State knew that that ball was alive. There were no whistles, and finally, I believe that was uh, number 18 getting back. Patrick Jenkins, the senior, he should have known that. Well, this all started with a low snap, and I don't think Morgan ever got a chance. You can see he doesn't turn. See the ball, the laces, everything turned to his left. Didn't really watch the football. A bad play by Grambling, but as this ball is kicked, Beyond the line of scrimmage, now the officials are going to see it was a dead ball play. Tennessee State will have the ball first down at their five-yard line. Yeah, Kevin Barbary actually dropped the hold on that. He was trying to hold it, and he took his finger off before the kick was actually attempted. It was a little Charlie Brown play. Charlie Brown and Lucy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and what he did, again, but again,
again, as you watched it, when the ball was being held, the seams, the, the laces were turned away. So it was a bad play from, from start to finish. So poor field position to start off for Tennessee State. Bryson Rosser, the redshirt freshman, coming in to play quarterback. They go right to the ground, and their outstanding running back, Charles Anthony, has a big hole off the left side, and he's got a first down before he's finally brought down by the yellow jerseys. Antoine Smith finally wrapped him up along with Ronald Johnson as we take a look at the Coors Light starting lineup for Tennessee State. Ricky Gibbs is at fullback. Charles Anthony, who we just saw there. Anthony Brown is your tight end. Walker Jones, Shaw Cooper, and Alexander up front. As they go with the uh, no huddle offense, Grambling State offsides as we got flags down on the field. Well start on the offense, first down. So he was drawn offsides, penalty against Tennessee State. One of the offensive linemen didn't quite get set, had a little move. I think that was Chad Shaw. Didn't quite get set there, puts them back five yards. But again, on that first play, you saw Anthony. We'll talk more about him as the ball game goes on. Now it's Rosser going out of the shotgun. Looking deep down the center of the field. Caught in stride. Beautiful play. Yeah, it's Kevin, Kevin Hollis. Hollis, the sophomore from Lansing, Michigan, who actually made the catch. Well, they're in man coverage right there. It may have been a throw you wouldn't want. He throws it right in the coverage right inside. A deflection, almost got it. We lose that little shot. But there is again Hollis, great concentration to catch the ball and continue making the first down in the big play for T.S. T.S.U. Rosser with time, looking out in the flat, looking for Anthony Brown, but incomplete. Anytime you spread your offense, you're going to get an opportunity to go man coverage that time. Had a little drag play by time by Brown, just overthrew him. Coors Light defensive starting lineup. Travis Carmagees along with Leonard Patton, Antoine Lawrence, and Al Turner. Antoine Smith, Ron Johnson, Marcus Yanez is also their punter. And Massey Brown, DeGray, and Reed are probably one of the best secondaries in black college football and keep your eye on chris brown number 19 tremendous hitter like to make big plays and octavius bond to come in sometime in the nickel package double time set they'll pitch it to charles around the right side finds his way crosses the 40 yard line but we do have a flag down as antoine smith pushed him out of bounds Probably a hold that time, maybe on, from where that uh, flag was thrown. Probably a hold on TSU, but we'll wait. You got it, Stan. One for one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Starting the season off right. <laughs> I should stop. I should play that. I'm in Vegas. Holding on the offense. Ten yard penalty. Repeat it down. Yeah, you should come out with us uh, tonight after the game. Now, Tennessee State goes unbalanced line right. They run with two tight ends. You can see the hole right there. It looked like actually it was a defensive hole on one of the grappling guys. But you can see one, two, three blockers right there. Get the job well done by TSU. Anthony getting his shoulders around, going north and south. A very strong runner. Second down and 20 after they mark off the penalty. Out of the shotgun again goes Rosser. Back the pass. Looking out in the flats, looking for the senior, Patrick Jenkins, and he couldn't hold on. Out on the coverage was Antoine Smith. Octavius Bonds, who has just been all world so far this season. Probably been their most valuable player on the defense this year. Oh, without question. I mean, even though you love Denmark Reed and you love what Michael DeGree is doing, Octavius Bond has the two interceptions that the Grambling defense has picked off this season. Ross at that time floated that ball. Need to put a little more steam on it. Bond would have been ready. May have got an interception, but it sets down a long third down situation for Tennessee State. Five receivers for Rosser, looking upfield, out in the flat. Oh, he, he had his man. It looked like Ronald Jackson could have hauled that in. 
runs again in on the coverage along with Denmark Reed. Really like the strength of the arm in the freshman red shirt roster. Sits in the pocket, puts the ball out there in a rope. But you can see there's there's one coming out there just a second late. Almost had a, an interception. Denmark Reed makes a deflection. What he's got to do a better job is look at his progression, his first, second receivers. That time he missed red coverage, got away with it. So on the punt and away will be Hudak who doubles as their field goal kicker. And he gets a good foot into it. DJ Clay pulled fair catch but couldn't handle it. And let's see who gets it. And the Tennessee State Tigers were able to retain possession. Actually, uh, you know, Grambling's got it. They're saying Grambling's got it, but Tennessee State is arguing that they do it. No, it's, it's going to be Grambling. A lot of stuff goes on. You can hear him down there. Get up, get up, quick, quick. A lot of stuff going on down at the bottom of that pile. And DJ Clay, he fumbles the catch, but Grambling holds on. We are scoreless here at the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. Scoreless here in the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. Darren Horton along with Stan Luter. Stan, what is Doug Williams thinking about right now? Doug is saying, wow, man, we got away with one draft then. And he's got to talk to this team about settling down and being ball control. That's what they're interested in tonight, not making mistakes. The turnover margin for Graham has been a minus one, something Doug certainly wants to improve. And also, he was talking to me earlier about hitting the guys. They've done it on defense again. They've got to take better care of the football in the offensive field. Correll Charles on that last carry. They want to establish the running game, something they didn't do early on in the season. Last week, Correll Charles, 89 yards rushing. That's one of the things that Grambling has not been able to do. They thought they were going to have Brad Hill here, yeah. but he had some academic problems. Well, they're only averaging about 2.1 per per rush, and they've got to get better than that. The run sets up the pass. Eugene going upstairs, but overthrows his man, looking for Tremont Douglas, but uh, uh, Deion Giddy's all over that play. And Brandon Hubbard came in and really laid a lick to Bruce Eugene. Made Eugene push that ball up just a little quick. Watch Brandon Hubbard come in, number 31. Coming in your screen right there. Puts the pressure on and hits him just as he delivers it and drives him. Coaches like to see a player drive a guy down. He took that in. I said, Eugene, hey, Hubbard hit him. Put a hit on him. Third and eight out of the shotgun. Eugene complete underneath. Here comes a big play. It's Calvin Cole quick crossing the 50 yard line with a first down. So again, Grambling coming through big time on third down. Great call by this offensive coordinator, Melvin Spears and the Grambling Tigers. You know there's going to be an upfield rush this time. You're in the third and long. What do you do? You throw the little flip screen right there to one of your better receivers, a trackster in Calvin Cole quick. Great speed. He can take it to the house. A big play makes a stop. But that's what you've got to do. That's good coaching by Grambling State. There was a question as to where the Colquitt was even going to play tonight. He has sore ribs after last week's win over Alabama A&M. Still scoreless here in the first quarter. Eugene, this time with three receivers in the double tight end set, goes back to the ground. Charles got a crease, cuts it outside, crossing the 35-yard line, close to the 30-yard line before he's brought down by Scott Cunningham. Oh, what a nice run. Again, in a wide formation. Two, three wide receivers. It puts you in man coverage. Your offensive line, what's a great job by the offensive line there? Riley, right, Daryl Rogers. They clear a path, and all you got to do if you're Correll Charles is find your hole. Nice little stretch play picks up about seven. I'd imagine that Grambling likes to be able to run the ball. They have been able to pass, but again, that running game they'd like to establish with Correll Charles, who interestingly enough came to Grambling as a walk-on. First and ten from the 32. Play action. Eugene across the middle. Beautiful catch made by Tremont Douglas. He had a lot of sip on it. He knocked it down first and then hauled it in. <laughs> I told you, you got to listen to us, folks, when we tell you about the outstanding receivers in the swag. Here he is, Tremont Douglas. Look away, you're in man coverage, send him right over the middle, bobbles it, catches it, good concentration, catches it, takes a lick, and keeps on ticking. Tremont Douglas. So Grambling picks up the first down. They'll move the change to the 13-yard line. Grambling, of course, 
Lost that opener to McNeese State, but now looking to win their third in a row. Eugene going back, feeling pressure complete. It's Byron Anderson, and he's close to a touchdown down at the one. Ahmad Safiullah makes the tackle. Beautiful play inside. Stan. We'll talk about this a lot. You're in man coverage. All you do is another inside screen. But you can't see you can't see at the bottom of the screen where Dion Giddens slips just a bit. He was trying to break on the inside route, fell down, but also you saw Douglas fall. Could have been a touchdown for Gramble instead. First and goal. Power eye set. Full house backfield for the Grambling State Tigers. They go to the ground. Charles, nothing doing. White jerseys all there. So it brings up second down goal to goal from the two. Well, Charles trying to replace Brad Hill, who is Mr. Everything, had a chance to talk to Doug Williams yesterday about Brad Hill, and he said, hey, that was a guy who rushed for 1,000 yards, first guy they had rushed for 1,000 yards since Eric Gant, and, you know, to ask Correll Charles to replace him is a tough task, but Correll Charles has stepped up to it. Certainly has. Play action, Eugene out in the flat. Looking for Quentin Payne, who couldn't hang on. Now, Quentin Payne is a converted linebacker, so you're not really expecting him to have the greatest hands in the world. But, Darren, I think you and I both may have caught that. But, again, now, Eugene in the pocket runs out, and watch him. He floats it a little bit. you got to throw that ball, keep it a little lower. If you don't float it, it's a touchdown. You float it to the linebacker. Linebacker is now fullback. First time he's touched the ball all season, doesn't make the play. Big play here. Third down, goal to goal from the two. Again, they go with that full house backfield. Six minutes, 15 seconds left to go. See if they go for James and Riley. First. Back to Correll Charles, and he's in. Touchdown. Blocking on the right side of the line. Daryl Rogers, Kenneth Ogletree. A good block that time by Payne and Angel. Knocks him in there. Correll Charles. Touchdown. Grambling State. So GSU strikes first. The extra point is between the uprights and good. So the Grambling State Tigers take the lead. 7 0. Correll Charles powers his way in from two yards out. And the Tigers have the lead here in the inaugural Classic. 7 0 Grambling State on top. Darren Hort, Stan Luter here at the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic in Las Vegas, Nevada. We see James Reese, his team, 1 and 2. And he said this is a critical game for them as we get the kickoff going. Coming back, Tennessee State crossing the 25 uh, yard line. It's Jenkins. Getting up to the 27-yard line before he is gang-tackled <laughs> by those yellow jerseys. Pierre Cannon, the first one in, and they're still blowing the whistles. I told you, a lot of stuff goes on down at the bottom of those piles now. And they're fighting for the football and looking for loose change and everything else you can imagine down there. You see the... You got a flag on the play? You certainly do. Offside on the kickoff, I guess. Okay. So you mean all that they were doing at the bottom of the pile, they got to do it over again now? Let's see if Tennessee State uh, accept. Yeah, that looks yeah, make like they kick. will. You like to make a team kick it again because you feel like those big guys don't want to run down the field again. They don't want to sprint again. So maybe you can bust one. I think the ball was at the 30. Let's see this time if TSU can advance the ball. They should get this kickoff about the 5 or 10. So hopefully for Tennessee State, it'll be a plus this time. We're here at Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. Beautiful venue. Over 22,000 are here and for this inaugural classic. I would like to thank NBC Network for carrying this live black college football game. If you'd like to see more black college games, call your local cable operator for NBC Network. As you take a look, Brian Morgan is being set to kick off for Grambling. He was an All-American last year, led the SWAC in scoring with 93 points. And back once again will be uh, Patrick Jenkins. See. Jenkins will take this one from the nine. Crossing the 25-30. Cuts it out. 
right side up to the 37-yard line. So they pick up about five yards, Dan. Good play if you're a Tennessee State fan. Puts you in better field position right there. And let's see now. Rosser's had two series. Let's see if he, he's just been just a bit off there with a couple of passes. Let's see what they want to establish on James Reese's side. I like what he's doing. He's just got to be a little accurate right in there. Don't have happy feet. Keep the same idea that you've got if you're Tennessee State. But something to keep in mind if you're a Grambling fan. Grambling 2-1 and one when they score first in the three football games of the season. Will that trend continue? Only time will tell. If you watch NBC, if you stay on the NBC Network, you'll find that out. I know you, you, I know you subscribe to the NBC Network. That's well, when, clear. I, when I pay my cable bill. <laughs> But again, it's Anton Lawrence making the tackle that time. He's a big boy, leads the team in sacks. Uh, Brunswick, Georgia, as we take a look. Charles Anthony, one of two running backs on this team who has rushed for 100 yards in a game this season. The other, my main man, Sugar Sanders, a transfer from Memphis State. Now, again, Coach Reese talked to me the other day, and one of the things he said was that they were taking down about 65% of their offense, trying to make things easier for the young quarterback, Rosser. He's getting hand signals. They're having a little problems right now getting some of those signals in, but you can see what they're trying to establish to do. Get the ground game going with Charles. They have a couple of excellent tight ends, and Charles, as we mentioned, has been outstanding 700 plus yards last year and he's a sophomore this year and they're just expecting him to get better and better he cuts it outside you see that speed we talk about he is so quick getting to the outside as he picks up a first down close to the 50 yard line Denmark Reed pushes him out of bounds and Charles was able to pick up a few extra yards because of a great block watch at the top of your screen number 17 Ronald Jackson the wide receiver watch him just hold this guy up just a bit watch Ronald Ronald getting in the way a little bit and he gives Gives Charles a few more extra yards. You know, it's just one of those little plays you don't notice, but coaches love it, and running backs certainly do. Good block, good play by TSU. Ronald Jackson dealing with Octavius Bonds out there. They'll send Jenkins in motion. Again, it's Charles on the ground. And again, breaking tackles as he crosses the 50, picks up four yards on the play. Willie Gray brings him down. Charles in his last ball game, the loss to Jackson State last Saturday, Southern Heritage Classic, 13 carries, 113 yards. And as you said, you know, one of the leading runners was last year the leading rusher for this Tennessee State team. And again, they're going to make it very, very simple for their quarterbacks and their young players. Toss the ball to Charles, let him run. They work down that clock. It was a penalty on that last play. I didn't quite catch it, Stan. I think it was an offside. I, I thought I may have seen the right or uh, right defensive end jump. Not quite sure it was, but the officials saw that. And so what they did, they did, took the play, makes it a nice first and five. And coaches, offensive coordinators like this situation. Don't be surprised if you see them maybe try to put the ball up. We haven't called my man C.J. Johnson's name. Let's look and see if they go to Johnson or number one, Carlos, right in the slot. Rosser again back to pass, feeling the pressure, screen play, but he overthrew Charles Anthony, who had a lot of real estate in front of him. Rosser is the red shirt freshman from Hackensack, New Jersey, one of the best quarterbacks in that state coming out of high school, won a couple of state titles with uh, Hackensack High School, and they really say that he's a very bright young man, has quick retention. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something interesting about him is after this play. And it's against Grambling. I believe that was number 99, Jimmy Zachary, who uh, pushed the center on that play, Rashard Shaw. And I think this is going to be on Jimmy Zachary. And then all it was was voice inflection that time by Rosser. Let's see if they'll get the play. But Rosser, you're talking about smart. His dad was a football star. See if we get to get the call from the officials. Dead ball offside on defense. Five yard penalty. But back to what I was saying, Ross's dad was a football star at Cornell University. And ironically enough, he went to Eastside High School. Eastside High School, uh, Coach Taylor has the offside, and it was a little hut. 
<laughs> it's like that, and he got him to jump. But Eastside High School in New Jersey is where, you know, Joe Clark, you know, lean on me. Right. Well, one of my coworkers, Rocky Whitaker, was a teammate of Rosser's dad. See how I weave my, my, my exactly. coworkers the in so and the store in. and Joe Clark in New Jersey. I got a lot of stuff. I know a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. But isn't that interesting? Yeah, that is. I thought it was. No, it yes. is. That, that's very interesting. All right, you didn't think it was. But anyway, you, you anyway, Rosser, anyway, Rosser, Rosser's a smart kid. He goes with a good family. <laughs> he is. Rosser again, and more flags on the field. Is and Rosser got hit kind of late there. Yeah, I think you're going to get maybe in legal procedure this time. I think that this time one of the uh, offensive linemen may have let uh, raised his hand just a bit before the snap count. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat it down. This has been a first down, a penalty, 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 penalty. Now, according to my stats, you're three for three tonight. So where are you taking me when this game is over? I think, well, I don't know. What do you want to go back to the hotel? I mean, there's so many different places to go and gamble, but you certainly have Lady Luck with you tonight. You take a look at the passing yards, and Grambling's been able to get it done through the air, and their running game's not bad either. Well, again, both teams' young co quarterbacks, they're trying to get rhythm for them. I kind of expected to see Tennessee State run the football tonight. Rosser again feeling some pressure, and this time they got him. Number 94, Antoine Lawrence, who, as we mentioned, he leads the team in sacks. Make it two and a half now on the season. All swag candidate Antoine Lawrence, the big fella. 6'1", 280 pounds, just comes in the charge. Watch this. Comes through the gap right there. You can't see him. There he comes right there, big Antoine. And there's nothing Rosser can do. You can be smart. He was smart enough to run. Antoine said, you can't get away from me, young fella. To Rosser's credit, he did a pretty good job of holding on to the football on that play. So they'll lose 10 yards on the play, and now they need a timeout. They are confused on offense, and Bryson Rosser will call a timeout, go over and talk to his offensive coordinator. We're going to take a break in the action. Our score is 7 0 Grambling State, leading here in the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. We'll be back right after this. See James Reese, his team down 7 0. 253 left to go here in the first. Second down and 19. Rosser again feeling the pressure, and again they go with that screen play, but Grambling sniffs it out. They had a nice play uh, complete to CJ Johnson, but. Rambling all over it. When you've got as, as many wide receivers as these two schools have that are talented, you look at Johnson and, and Andre and Jenkins and all, you want to get that pressure up the middle. Great point. Just makes the play, gets pushed down. But watch the good catch this time. C.J. Johnson, the flip screen. They're trying to get the ball in his hands as many times, as many ways as they can. Picks up a few yards. But again, I like the poise right near Rosser. Get the ball in Johnson's hands. Third and 17. Rosser going deep. He's got Johnson and it's off his fingertips. Chris Brown, the all swack defensive back, was out there in coverage. But that pass was about uh, maybe a half foot too long. Yeah, but that was a great matchup that time. You had two of the premier players in Blackhawk football. A nice throw. The really gets the ball up under there, but maybe just a little bit too long. And if he catches it, he's got six possibly. Great coverage that time by Grambling's Chris Brown. Chris Brown, one of the premier defensive backs in all of college football. So DJ Clay standing back at his own 17-yard line waiting to receive the bunt from Joey Hudak. Tennessee State trails by seven here in the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. Hudak kicks it high, but not that deep. And it's going to land at about the 30-yard line and take a grambling bounce out to about the 33. And that's where the Tigers of Grambling State will come on and start their offense. You know, during any time you, you have two schools like this, you, I, I like to call it X factors, things that, that the coaches don't talk about, but these are intangibles to win games. And I think both teams, although they have solid kicking games, I really think somebody's going to break, break a big play, a punt's going to be blocked, somebody's going to take a kickoff return. And again, whichever team's offensive line and defensive line can control this game, I think that team's going to have a better chance of winning. Many of our viewers out there, if you're an executive looking to jumpstart your career, why don't you visit minoritycareer.com? Eugene 
getting back to work. In the pocket, he has time. Had his receiver, but Tremont Douglas couldn't haul it in. Ahmad Safiullah out on the coverage, and, and look at Doug Williams. He's hot. <laughs> Doug said, hey, that's not the read, and he's exactly right because Colquitt was open on the other side of the field, but he looked one way, followed one receiver, and that happens a lot with young quarterbacks. They'll follow one guy down the field. A nice attempt to Douglas is a little too high. It's so frustrating because he had Randy Himes last year who was so polished in uh, trying to get a quarterback to kind of understand what it is that you want. And look at Doug Williams coming out right now doing some coaching, telling uh, Bruce Eugene, who really struggled in the opener. But to his credit, he came back and, and played very well against Alcorn State and then last week against Alabama a &M. Well, as you said, he uh, was uh, lost the starting job in theory to the young kid, comes back after the game, comes in against Alcorn, with three touchdown passes, including the game winner to D.J. Clay. I don't know right now what Coach James Reese, a couple of plays early, possessions I should say, Coach Reese was on the officials about something. I don't know if it's a sideline ban warning or if he's seeing something on the field that obviously we can't get to right now. But whatever it is, he, he's not happy. But he's telling his people, hey, let's get this right. And I, I tend to think it may be a ban. Tell him, because I saw him talk to one of the administrative assistants and say, hey, tell him something. So it might be, hey, tell the band don't play while the, your uh, team's got the ball. Four for four for you, Stan. Again, it's to the ground and a huge gaping hole. And Correll Charles had, I could have ran through that hole. In fact, me and you together could have ran through that hole. Well, I know I could have. I don't know about you. But I, <laughs> and you can run through holes anytime your offensive line will create them. We talked a moment ago. Look at that. A great block to the outside. A big gap. That was a big time block that time. By who was that? Number 33. I can't, I can't see who was that. Oh, that was uh, Leonard who had made a block earlier to spring a play. And Charles, all he's got to do is just make the play. He does. Correll Charles. And you see the rushing yards, total yards actually, 113 Grambling, 65 for Tennessee State. Charles again, uh, Eugene again going upstairs, has plenty of time, and he's got his man wide open. It's Tremont Douglas going to the house. What nothing you could do. What a great pass and a great route that time by Charles, hooking up to a touchdown for Grambling. A 50-yard touchdown completion from Bruce Eugene to Tremont Douglas. Talked about how talented he was in the pregame show, and he is not disappointed. Brian Morgan on for the extra point, and it's straight down the middle, 14-0. The G-Men take the lead. You can't see it, but it was a little double move right there. He stepped inside, made a little like he was going inside, popped it back to the outside, and there wasn't anything that uh, Gideons could do. He fell for the first fake. Great job at the time by Tremont Douglas. You can watch this. Great protection by the Grambling offensive line. All you got to do is throw. You can see him. He's beating Gideons. There's nothing you can do but just pick six. Touchdown, Grambling State. He is really talented. And you think about the player they had last year who really, I think, put Grambling back on the map. And talking about Scotty Anderson, who got drafted by the Detroit Lions. First time in seven years a Grambling player gets drafted. And when you talk about reviving the tradition, that really is a signal that things are back when you get players getting drafted into the NFL. Without question about it, I had the pleasure of watching Scotty Anderson play. Great wide receiver. Saw him, as a matter of fact, last Sunday when the Lions played the Panthers. A kid that's got great upside, and there's so many of these wide receivers on this brand team that Doug feels like have potential, but the main man is my man Tremont Douglas, and we saw why that time. Great route, great pass, great catch. Touchdown, Grambling. Jenkins will take it at the 10. Running up the left side, he's got a little opening. Crosses the 30, breaks some tackles, crosses the 40. Should be a late hit Before there. he is pushed out of bounds by Jermaine Mills. I don't see a flag on the field. Well, they let that one slide. Well, we talked about it a moment ago that we think special teams is going to play a very important role in kicking game. There's a wedge right there. And watch this little uh, 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 like, like, nope, take it right there. And then it's all the way. He thinks for a second he's going to break that. But then, see, there's a little extra push. Should have been, probably could have been a flag that time. But since it went over the, on the uh, Tennessee State side, all the Tennessee State guys hugged their man Jenkins and said, come on, let's play. Got to get a touchdown. 
Minute two left to go here in the first quarter. All Grambling as Bryson Rosser, the redshirt freshman, goes back to work for Tennessee State. Now he'll step back into the shotgun. Seven seconds left on that play clock. Very important for TSU to be patient now. Rosser now will go for the home run. And he had his senior, Patrick Jenkins, who couldn't haul it in. Jenkins is a captain, really interesting player, about 5'6", runs a 4'4", and that has caught the attention of some, NBA, uh, some NFL scouts, but he's going to have to haul in a pass like that. That was one he could have caught. Yeah, Jenkins, a tremendous athlete. Again, I sold one-on-one -on -one with Bond that time. Ball just a bit overthrown. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty. Be first down. They've got other problems <laughs> in addition to not catching the ball. They're having some problems with the penalties. So they'll march him back 10 yards, bring up first down and 20. And see, this is the situation that James Reese wanted to avoid, making Rosser have to make a big play. Don't be surprised if you watch. him is now in a four or five defensive back situation. They may bring some linebackers now. Put more pressure on the young quarterback. They've got them all at the line of scrimmage. Four seconds on that play clock. Now he'll call the timeout. He saw that blitz coming, and he decides to use the timeout. So Bryson Ross, we mentioned that Tennessee State has struggled with the quarterback position. Riley Walker and Kenny Irby have also seen some action, and you have to wonder at what point yeah, exactly. uh, the offensive coordinator, John Carr, and uh, his head coach, James well, Reese, will make a decision to perhaps change quarterback. Well, you know, to be very honest with you, you take a couple of passes that just floated that time by Ross, or if his receivers can make a couple of big plays, that, then he's had success. I think if you're a coach, especially when you're coaching young quarterbacks, patience is going to be very important. How, when do you want to pull the plug? They're really high on this kid, Ross. They think he makes some good decisions. He has a good understanding of the offense. And as I said earlier, they've scaled down their offense a little bit, trying to make things simple. They're trying to get Charles involved in the offense on the run attack and I think if they can do that I should say Anthony if they can do that I think you're going to see Mark success by this TSU team but right now they've got to be very patient putting him in a first and 20 an all-out blitz by Grambling doesn't help the confidence of the young quarterback it seems like they've had some success running the football you're a little surprised that they haven't stayed with the run well they're in a situation there where you can get bits and pieces that's why I said a moment ago they've got to be patient and whether they do they threw long on first down I think right now they go back to the run game and they do with Sugar Sanders, who had a big hole, and he rumbles ahead across the 40-yard line, picks up eight yards on the play before Ronald Johnson brings him down. And there's my man Sugar. Sugar, Sugar, Cocoa Pie, because he's so <laughs> sweet. Big Sugar, transfer from Memphis State, loves to go in between the tackles. Picks up about seven yards, just that bank, bank, bank. Poor Grambling guys hit Sugar. He kept going. He's sweet. He's a bowling ball. <laughs> he is a bowling ball. Second and 13 after the rush. Rosser again to the air. He's got time this time and complete. Carlos Wright made the grab. Close to the 50-yard line. He's about three yards shy of the first down. Michael DeGray in on the play. And that, that pass... Darren showed the strength of Rosser's arm because that's a long pass across the field. May have stayed in the air a little bit too long, but you like Jenkins' ability to come back and make the play, not try to fade on it where it could possibly have been picked off. And it makes it an easier situation there. You're in a third down and three. And we have reached the end of the first quarter. The Grambling State Tigers with a 14-0 lead here in the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. They have been awesome. Everything as advertised. 14-0 Grambling State on top. We'll be back. And welcome back. Full moon here in Las Vegas. 14-0 Grambling State on top as we take a look at the JW Marriott first quarter stats. And there they are. <laughs> Rushing, you know, I mean, again, Tennessee State trying to establish the run game. First down is Grambling State's predominant in the offense. Incomplete. Looking for... Uh, Ronald Jackson, I believe, underneath. Actually, that was Jenkins again. Denmark Reed in on the coverage. 
And that was a third down play. They only needed three yards for the big pass. And now we will see the punting unit again. Joey Hudak coming on for Tennessee State. I would not be surprised. Again, not wishing any ill on either coach or either team. I wouldn't be shocked to see a punt return tonight or a block kick. I just got a feeling because the kickers are getting balls off a little slow and snaps aren't going fast. And people are seeing that in the air. I wouldn't be shocked. Hudak kicks it high, but again, it's short. And the fair catch call for at the 22-yard line by D.J. Clay. So now, Stan, it's 14-0. Your defense is uh, back on the field, and this was kind of the predicament that Tennessee State found themselves in last week against Jackson State at the beginning of that ball game. Well, you're exactly right. Getting behind early and trying to fight appeal. Grambling plays well from in front. When I had a chance to talk to Doug early in the week and also yesterday, one thing he really put an emphasis on was resting the defense, being a ball control team. Well, they had the quick score a moment ago, with Dallas, but otherwise he's got to be very very happy with his offense. They've done a very good job of controlling the line of scrimmage and controlling the time on the clock. So Bruce Eugene coming out as we get set for second quarter action. They will start at the 22 yard line. Eugene again, this time he'll keep it. He eludes a tackler, cuts it outside, crossing the 30-yard line before he's finally pushed out of bounds by Ahmad Safiola. Safiola has uh, been playing, uh, getting a lot of tackles tonight. And Eugene very close to another first down, but do we have flag down? Uh, I don't think so, but you can see, you know, it's a coverage play, and then Eugene says, hey, I'm going to take a couple of missed tackles. And Coach Reese and I talked about this very thing. Our guys have got to hit and stick. They didn't do that. Bruce Eugene, a wide load. He's a big quarterback, 6'1", 230 pounds, can take a lick, and he did. Got a first down, almost a first down. Second down and a yard to go. Here's Eugene again in the pocket, again going upstairs. He's got a man. It's Tyron Anderson, and he's out of bounds across the 20-yard line. Dion Giddens, a guy, again, who gets beat. What a beautiful play, a beautiful call. If we get a shot of this, you're going to see Anderson make an inside move. He just shoulders in the inside, and then there's the ball right on the money. Great pass, great catch, and there's my man again being victimized at time. Dion Giddens, watch this pass. Right where it needed to be right in stride just maybe a hair slow but Giddens makes the play doesn't make the defensive play Anderson his cousin Scotty Anderson we just referred to a few moments ago making a big play and Doug Williams says hey fellas let's go in for the kill right now his brother Brian his cousin Anthony and Stevie they all are members of uh, the Tiger Alumni Club all played for uh, Eddie Robinson at the time Here's Eugene out of the shotgun. He's got all day back of the end zone that time looking for Tremont Douglas. Actually, that was Calvin Colquitt he was looking for, but nonetheless, the pass incomplete. Can you get a new situation coming right at you? Both wide receivers kind of make a little screen there, and then you bring the second guy underneath, and Cunningham's able to get inside the play just at the last moment to break that pass up. It already been six for Colquitt. And Scott Cunningham, he's held his own in this game, but Deion Giddens is the guy that they've picked on. Second down and ten. They'll send Anderson out right, along with Douglas and Colquitt out to the left, and again, they'll go out of the shotgun. Quick pass, and there was some miscommunication there. Tyron Anderson, the intended receiver, but he cut inside, and I think uh, Bruce Eugene wanted him on the outside. He zigged when he should have zagged. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a, what it was was a stop and go route, and Anderson stopped, and there was a little fade right. You're in one on one coverage again because, again, Tennessee State trying to mix up their defenses and confuse the young quarterback. Came with a little bit of stunt, had a linebacker go inside, defensive tackle go to the other side, but again, he picked that up, made the pass, but again, you, you just didn't complete the play that time. Miscommunication. Again, there with three wide outs this time. One would think this would be an obvious passing situation. Fire and Anderson, you saw him in that huddle kind of uh, sigh with, with a little frustration. He realizes that that was his mistake, but he's feeling pretty confident out there on Deion Giddens. 
You see Doug Williams, he wants more. Had a chance to visit with him yesterday. Asked him, said, hey, you still throwing the football around? He says, only to my son, <laughs> only to DJ. He said, he, he can't throw it anymore. Looks like he's enjoying some good uh, Louisiana cooking down there. <laughs> Food is good down there. It is uh, outstanding. Third down and ten. Eugene again with time, rolling, firing, complete. Anderson underneath, close to a first down, but I believe he's about a half yard shy as he gets tackled at the ten yard line by Scott King. What I like about the Grambling offense, they go trips to the right. You get it from a ground level. They send two wide receivers deep, and underneath is Anderson. There he can, similar to the little slip screen. He goes to an area, the ball is there, and you're able to pick up yards after the catch. So you go from a, maybe a long first down situation there to a short third down in about four. But I think there's a flag. The passer on the white, the pick line from the end of the run, half the distance, first down. I think Scott Cunningham may have done something at the end of that play. <laughs> So first and goal to goal from the five-yard line. Tennessee State's defense has got to raise their level right now. Rise up. you got to make the plays. Checking off. You're in man. Everybody's isolated. Cornerbacks have got to be smart. Eugene looking inside, and that pass, that time Deion Giddens was there. Intended receiver was Calvin Colquitt. Well, the question I'd ask is, did Giddens get away with a little hold? He's going to see there's going to be an inside slant, and he jumps the route. And right there, you see, might have been actually offensive pass yeah. interference. Looked like Colquitt pushed off with that left hand. But Deion Giddens said, why y'all keep picking on me? Yeah. Go the other way. <laughs> Leave me alone. That looked like a little basketball box out. A little box out. 13.40 left to go here until halftime. Second and five. Underneath, and again, a dangerous pass. Ahmad Safiullah, again on the coverage as he was looking for DJ Clay. Safiullah, one of the better defensive backs in the Ohio Valley Conference, and he's done a great job at Tennessee State, a little slant ride, and he's able to just jump that route again. And if you're a cornerback, you don't want to be beat to the inside. You want to make them go outside with the fade route or the boundary will get him. Safiullah does a great job cutting that play off, making it a third down situation there for Grambling. So third down, goal to goal from the five-yard line. 13.35 left to go until halftime. We'll have the Las Vegas halftime report coming up for you. Hope to hear a little bit of the dance. We had the step show last night. I missed all that. Yeah, you were studying. I didn't get it. Yeah, I didn't get the band. I didn't with, get the... Now, you're going with us to the uh, JW Marriott tonight to... Uh, go in the bed. I don't even know what time it is. I mean, I'm confused. What time is it? I, well, I most of my, friend, most of my friends are in bed in the East Coast. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm confused. I'm tired. Well, you, I don't we'll know where keep I you up. We'll get you a cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a football game. I'm all right. Third down goal to goal for Bruce Eugene. Four receivers out. Quick pass underneath. It's Anderson, and he's in the house for the touchdown. Great call again by the Grambling coaching staff. You go twins to both sides. Again, clear out one side. Send someone underneath. That time again, Thurl Anderson, Doug Williams has got to be happy with the performance of Bruce Eugene, the offensive line, and those wide receivers. They have so many weapons. We talked about Tremont Douglas, Thyron Anderson. And uh, you go down the line, Cole quit at a huge game in the opener. That's just a one-yard pass and a seven-yard run. But that's what you like the receivers to be able to do. Catch the ball, tuck it, and go. Touchdown. Rambling. And the extra point is good, so it's 21 to nothing. Rambling is all over. The Tennessee State Tigers. Underneath, it's Thyron Anderson giving Grambling the 21 0 lead. We'll be back right after this. And welcome back. 21 0. Doug Williams, Grambling State Tigers leading Tennessee State here in the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. It's going to be Malil Davis, the up back, taking it and taking it inside, crossing the 20-yard line. And he'll be stopped at about the 22-yard line. And 
That's where uh, we'll see the surfaces of the Tennessee State Tigers. Yeah, we're trying to mount a comeback. We were talking about it a few moments ago, the offensive productivity of, of Tennessee State. I mean, they're making some plays, but they've shot themselves in the foot in incompletion. They had a holding penalty. I still think if I'm Coach James Reese, that I, I, I make a statement and I continue to stand there going to do it. Keep Rosser in the football game. Let him try to make some plays. Teach them. This could be a growing up thing for uh, Rosser. They may have their quarterback. That may be one of the positive things that comes out of this game, but the good news is they've got plenty of time. Rosser back to the ground game. It's Charles, cuts his way outside, crosses the 30-yard line. He'll be about a two-yard shot first down marker. Terry Cooper pushed him out. If you're a Tennessee State fan, what would you like to see your team do? Is this that's a grinding out, six, seven-minute offensive plays, get you a touchdown. Good, great ability that time by Tennessee State to get to the outside. Charles is a smart player and just does a good job holding the football. They has got to get him to get up the field, up the field. Second down and one after the pickup. Picked up nine on that initial rush. They can run the football, and they've got plenty of time. Well, I mean, Tennessee State's averaging about 160 yards a game on the ground. So, I mean, you, they've, they've played good teams. When you look at who they played, I mean, the Prairie View team, South Carolina State, and a very strong Jackson State team. So, I mean, they can win football. But right now, this is important for them to establish a drive. But they want to go with Rosser going to the air despite the success that they've had on the ground. Corey Baker getting in to make that sack. Keeping your quarterback inside, not letting him scramble. There comes Corey Baker. He's coming in, hadn't had a lot of tackles. He's a special teams guy. Just now getting his chance to play the backer. Puts his, gets his first sack of the season. Coming hard. Big core. Good play. Corey Baker is a success rate in his own right. He gave some academic problems. And here's Rosser again, feeling some pressure. Nice pass and a completion made to Ronald Jackson on the near side. And I believe he has enough for a first down. Chris Brown, the player who got beat on the play. Out of the shotgun this time. Just try to roll him a little bit. Stay there, step up. And I like the freshman, not afraid to stay in the pocket. Makes a nice throw, Ronald Jackson. You got to get low to get this ball away from the defender. Boom, catch, first down. They pitch it inside. Charles picks up three, maybe four, on the play before Willie Gray slams him to the turf. So they're trying to mix it up. They like Rosser's arm. Well, they may have solved the problem. Going to the no huddle situation gives them a chance. Get your play. Look over your defense. And again, I like the poise of Rosser. Now, TSU's offensive line. Give him some time. Make some holes. First time we've seen the I formation tonight as Rosser checks off. Again, they run. Again, it's Charles. Charles Anthony. Now they're starting to understand that they can do this because they're getting three, four yards every time they run it. At that time, jump Wandale Cooper, and you had Barry and Jones inside there, both of those guard and tackle pulling, making a play, and then and you'd like to see your, your tackles, your tight end, and also that fullback make a play. Gibbs doesn't carry the ball much, nor does Adam Lindsay, but they're both very good blockers, picking up a hole out of the power eye again. They'll be going with the no huddle offense all night this time. They'll pitch it to Charles Anthony. He cuts it back and pulls his way across the 45-yard line, very close to another first down. I like this. Don't let your quarterback make mistakes. Don't beat him. Toss the ball to the big fella and let him run. Let him run. Watch this. Toss. Get those guys out there. Watch the block body. That Boom. Watch 33, 34, 44. Hit that guy. Get some chance to turn the corner. Good block. Got both the big fullbacks in, Gibbs and also Adam Lindsay. They move the chains to the 47. First down and 10. 10.30 left to go until halftime. That time, Charles Anthony slipped in the backfield. We've mentioned the fact that Charles Anthony had 100 yards rushing last week. 
Take another look at this. Well, he missed a game a week ago, two weeks ago, with an injured ankle. That time, I don't think the ankle gave away. I just think he just kind of got leaned forward a little too. You know how, you know how when your head gets in front of your feet, sometimes uh -huh. you just kind of boop, slip over? Uh, that's what he did. I actually don't know that because I've never. You never lean yeah, it. Okay, never. Right, no. Okay. Well, I usually just take it and uh, one step at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Screen play to Charles Anthony, crossing the 50, pulls his way across the 40-yard line, pushing Denmark Reed out of out of bounds, and uh, Tennessee State starting to pound that defense a little bit. A nice little safety pass out in the flat. You try to get your better players with the football. This is a nice, easy pass, just a little flip, and get him, then let him run. Great block by the offensive line of TSU, creating a hole, and then he tries to deliver a blow to Denmark Reed. <laughs> the offensive guy hitting the defensive guy. Kind of switching roles. I like that. I like that. Charles Anthony will get a break. Sugar Sanders into the game now. Now they'll let him get a. He's got a big hole crossing the three. Come back, still on his feet. He's going to go in. A 38 yard touchdown run by Sugar Sanders. I told you the boy was sweet. They don't call him Sugar for nothing. <laughs> Breaking tackles. <laughs> you, you love the run of Sugar Sanders. The transfer from Memphis gives the Tennessee State Tigers some life. Chihudak on for the PAT. Kick is up between the uprights and good. So suddenly a sign of life from Tennessee State. Sugar Sanders going 38 yards, breaking tackles to get Tennessee State back into the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. We'll be right back. Big 38-yard touchdown run by Sugar Sanders. What a run that was, Stan. I'm telling you what, Sugar Sanders, like we said, the transfer from Memphis State. And watch this, great cut back right against the grain. A good block on the offensive line. Then another block right there. Boom. He's got to keep his feet. Touchdown, Memphis State. Sugar Sanders last week, two weeks ago, 117 yards against Prairie View A&M. That can add your stats very easily. 38-yarder. Budak's kick is again a short one. This one will be taken by Octavius. Bonds. He's still on his feet. And he's going to be wrestled down at about the 25 yard line. Justin Williams among the tacklers in there making the, the play for Tennessee State. Bonds came in as a wide receiver. He's a terrific defensive back. Look at Doug Williams coaching the special teams as well. <laughs> we got all sides on the kick. Got a dead ball, press the foul, putting the face mask on goal. And that's what Doug is talking about. They, you know, the little unnecessary roughness. And what they tried to do on the offside, when they tried to send that, that middleman three in the middle on the special teams, the front guy, to try to attack Joey Hudak, he was too eager to hit that. So what they're going to probably do is, is, actually it's a dead ball, to be honest with you. So they probably have to re-kick this thing. I, I'm not exactly sure how they're going to interpret it. But Doug is not very happy with what happened. Brandon Hubbard you know, didn't make a smart play. And that's what you've got to do if you want to have a successful program. Correct. Correct mental mistakes immediately. Don't wait to film. Don't wait to Monday. Let's right. do it right now. Doug loves him, but he get him too. I like that. How about the Tiger marching man? There's a show within the show. Always at Black College Football Game. The bands on the sidelines. Many of the fans checking them out. And of course on the field, Doug Williams trying to sort this out. And they want to figure out what they want to do. <laughs> Doug Williams not happy and James Reese beside himself. It's hard to be a coach, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's so safe up here, boy. I tell you what, I got to talk about stuff. You've been down there. You've been in the midst of it. Yeah, that's why I like it up here, man. Eat, they feed you. <laughs> Come in, do the game. You know, it's going to be a five yard penalty and re kick. Then we got a dead ball, press the foul. Putting the face mask on goal. Both fouls will be penalized. Ooh, they're going to penalize them both. So there'll be a re-kick. It'll be a closer distance. They'll probably make them kick it from the 45. And then 
make that play from there. So again, this could be one of those things that can, if, for, for, if you're a Tennessee State person, could give you some momentum. Kick it deep, good coverage, make Grambling go three and out, get the ball, you get right back in this football game. Actually works out very well for Tennessee State because they, as you mentioned, will kick it off from the 45 yard line and offensively they seem to have figured out what they can do to attack this Grambling State defense. Now we're going to have to see whether their defense can rise to the occasion and uh, get a stop against Grambling's offense. Nine minutes, one second left to go until the Las Vegas halftime report. We'd like to also thank again uh, NBC Network for carrying this live black college football game. If you'd like to see more black college football games, call your local cable provider. This time it's Bonds trying to cut it out to the left side of the field. Spins, and we've got another flag down as he's brought down by Dwayne Spearman. You're going to get a block in the back by uh, John Brantley of Grambling. So they'll assess that from the end of the play as well. So now the momentum seems to be shifting towards Tennessee State. So that's going to give Grambling some really. On side, on receiving team. Got an illegal block in the back on receiving team. No. So they're going to march some more yardage off against Grambling. And now this defense will, will really be have to go, really be able to go after it. Well, see, if they, if there's no offsides, this was a dead ball in theory. So I guess they'll have to go back and re-kick this again. This is the, I, I've been to a lot of football games this year already. This is the first time I've ever seen three offsides on kickoffs. You know, you'll see that all season. All offsides on receiving team, decline. Decline that, okay. A illegal block in the back on receiving team, 10-yard penalty, inspired foul. Yeah, so they, they're going to take the penalty and they'll march him back and they'll start offense uh, probably at their own five-yard line. And that's very smart for, for Tennessee State again. After coming off that long drive, putting up a touchdown, a you know, nine-play, three-minute, 51-second drive to get seven points on Strip Sanders' run, now to come back and to pin Grambling deep in their own territory, what you hope to do is make them go three and out or maybe make Grambling make a mistake. If I'm Doug Williams, I can't be happy right now with my team's intensity. They pitch it to Charles, and he is pulled out inside the five, and that's going to be a loss of four yards as Marday Weaver brings him down. Also in on the play is Brian Harris. Second and 13. I formation for Grambling State. Pass complete out in the flat. Oh. And Calvin Colquitt eludes the tackler, and he's gone. One man to beat. It's Giddens. And now the guys in the white jersey finally catch up to him. And that play by Dion Giddens slowed him up enough so that the rest of the Tigers make their way to him. But what a huge play by Calvin Colquitt. And you remember all that momentum I was talking about a moment ago? Let's back and go. The defender slips down. you got to make sure of that play. Not a good decision that time by Cunningham to come up and make the play. If you don't do it, then you potentially can give up six. Great pass, great catch by Colquitt. Again, that time Deion Giddens wouldn't give up on the play. He was the guy beat that time. And again, Giddens makes the play to save a touchdown. So they'll move the chains all the way to Tennessee State's 35-yard line, but we got a timeout called by Tennessee State. That's their last timeout of the half. So James Reese wants to talk about what they need to do defensively. We're going to take a break in the action. 21-7 here at the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. Fans having a good time here in Las Vegas at the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. Grambling State with a 21-7 lead and trying to get some more. Bruce Eugene out of the shotgun. Complete. It was to Moses Harris, the sophomore out of Dallas, Texas. But he slipped before he could 
pick up some more yardage. So he's going to be about three yards shy of the first down. Ramblin's had a lot of success tonight, just sending receivers underneath. Or this time, Moses Harris. Feet go out from under him again, sending guys deep to clear out areas and then sending the wide receiver underneath. Maybe the fourth time saw it on the touchdown to Anderson would have done that. Now, don't be surprised if you can see that happen. You send the guy underneath, the defender bites on it, and then they send him up. So it's a little end cut, and then all of a sudden he takes it to the post. Second down and two. Eugene out of the gun once again. Again, looking across the middle. And Jamon Douglas could not hold on. Ahmed Safiula again in on the play. It's a post route you've got. Lane Douglas right inside. He's the slot receiver coming right at you, right to the post. And at the last minute, that's the ball he's going to be mad at because he said, I could have had six that time. But you said a good hit that time by Safula to make certain he doesn't hold it. I like that matchup that time, Safula versus Douglas, two of the better players in black college football. That was a beautiful pass. He got was. it over the outstretched arms of Jermaine Beal, the linebacker. And now, uh, again, we have some uh, confusion, and I believe the timeout is called by Kemling. <laughs> Boy, I would hate to be a quarterback coming over there to see Doug Williams and uh, encountering his wrath. Well, you know, <laughs> I, mean, I was talking, I was messing with Doug the other day about some of the, some of the, you know, the, the big plays these guys have got. But, you know, you think about Doug still holds the record. He's got about 10 to 12 records at Grambling for, you know, touchdowns, freshman year touchdowns, career yards. I mean, he's got about 10 yards. So, you know, think about a guy that's getting ready to make a record. Doug's the head coach. He pulls him out until he keeps his record, you know. 21-7, <laughs> our score here at the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. Check this out. 3,000 3, yards. A, uh, a quick rush by Correll Charles to pick up a first down for the Grambling State Tigers. And they'll move the change as he reaches across the 25-yard line. So we've got six and a half to go. Grambling with a 14-point lead and looking for more. See where Douglas is right there in the slot at the lower portion of your screen. He's got man coverage. Eugene will go to Douglas, and it's complete. He breaks a tackle, but pulled down across the five-yard line. Nice call there, offensive coordinator Luger. Again, again, you're, you're in man, so everybody's in one-on-one. -on -one. Again, we've seen this all night long. That was a little... Douglas makes a little move to the inside. That gives him some cushion. So full is the only man there to stay. But again, they run great pass routes if you're grambling. And that's one of the things that the relationship you've got. Sammy White as a wide receivers coach, an All-American, an NFL All-Pro guy. you got Doug Williams as a quarterback and as a coach. Again, handed off underneath. It's Charles Correll. Charles goes in his second touchdown of the game. will take a 20-point lead. Fuck, man. Damn. So Tennessee State's offense has risen to the occasion. Didn't they call them down two. right at the one, uh, Darren? They did? Oh, I thought I saw arms up. Guess what, Stan? They got the touchdown now. <laughs> a delayed gratification. That time it's Bruce Eugene. Bad. Thanks a lot, man. Bail me out there. I thought that I actually thought he was in too. We saw hands go up, but it could have been the official. And it could have been one of the Grambling players because you know players want to officiate. Right. But nevertheless, it's still six for Grambling. BAT is good by Brian Morgan. So make it an even 28-7. Grambling State on top. Bruce Eugene, he has played really well. What a terrific story he is. 6'1", 245. He actually lost 30 pounds before this season. He's a sophomore, had a lot of pressure on him to replace uh, Randy Himes, who, by the way, Randy Himes made the Ravens this year as a practice squad player. So, uh, you know, he's basically re replacing an NFL player. 
And he has done an excellent job. He struggled a little bit in that McNeese State game, but he has come back since and redeemed himself and really think they found their guy. Well, you know, into that you into the McNeese State game, he'd only started one time, and that was an Alabama State game last season. So really he, he didn't have any experience. This is only his fourth start of his career. A big kid, as you said, about 230, 240. I mean, in that Donovan McNabb, Dante Culpepper mode. Again, having a guy, a Super Bowl MVP, a guy that's a legend in college sports as your head coach, your quarterback's coach, and you're a sophomore, you can only hope that there's going to be a great future for this young man. It really has helped having Doug Williams here to kind of revive the tradition. I, I asked him, I said, do the young players know exactly what it means to play for Grambling? He said, well, they're learning. <laughs> he said, they're learning. But uh, a lot of people that come in, you can see people talk about NFL football, and there's a lot of the players don't know the history, but Grambling's history is so rich as we take another look at Patrick Jenkins returning this kickoff. And Jenkins has a little crease as he goes up the sideline and pushed out of bounds at the 40 yard line but you talk about the history of Grambling both of these schools we, we touched on it a little bit at the beginning of our uh, broadcast tonight about the 11 black college national championships in fact the last two years Doug Williams has won the black college national championship and of course Eddie Robinson over 400 wins most wins all time in college football any division over 250 NFL players five current players that are playing on Sundays in the NFL and, and so many players over the years you talk about man Williams. When you know you you can make a team of a team of, of Hall of Famers we'll talk more about this as this game goes on but the, the names wow great players at both schools Drew Sanders this time cutting outside he's got blockers the Grambling did a good job of stringing that play all the way out to the sideline maybe he picks up three yards Michael Dagre able to push him out of bounds. And, and we find out a little bit more about the moxie of this Tennessee State football team now. I mean, they had a great drive, got on the board, had some momentum, grambling, great play call, and get some six points, you know, a 95-plus yard drive. Now has Tennessee State got the resolve now to drive it back down the throat, get more points on the board. You've got time. Rosser feeling pressure, and down he goes. Seems like they want to go to the air, but they just don't necessarily have it. Degree, Michael Degree made the sack. But it, it seems like they're so successful on the run, Stan. I, well, that time Degree comes out with a little delayed blitz that time. He gets his first sack of the season. A kid that, that Doug describes as an improving player every day, getting better, not afraid to hit you. Only a sophomore comes on the blitz. Again, Tennessee State, not enough men in the box to block that. Big play by Grambling. Push it back, make it third and 12 for Rosser. Big pass, beautiful play, complete. I believe it's Carlos Wright. Check that. Ronald Jackson makes the catch. And it looks like it's going to be a first down. They've got plenty of time to work with. Four minutes, 13 seconds. As we take a, a look at this play. Good protection. Knight just steps up in the pocket. You like to see it. Ball on a rope. The only guy that can get that pass is Jackson. The Grambling defenders get there a little late. Octavius Bond pushed off a little bit. Comes back. Jackson does. Makes the catch. First down. We'll go with the double tight end set. Four minutes to go here in the first half. Sanders again. Check that. That's their other running back, Charles Anthony, but he's brought down. Doesn't pick up much on the first down play. In fact, I believe he lost a couple of yards. Willie Gray made the stop. Sugar Sanders checks back in. Three minutes, 30 seconds. One thing about running at this point, the clock continues to tick. We should point out Stan Grambling they had the ball first offensively, so in the second half, Tennessee State will receive the ball. Very important pack. Yeah, if they can score and then get the ball back and get right back in this game. Rosser looking down the middle, looking for his big tight end, Steve Farmer, and just overthrown a little bit. Been a very frustrating season for that young man. He's probably their most talented player overall. The NFL scouts are salvating to get him. He's big tight end former basketball player but 
you know, while he has been an all Ohio, Ohio Valley uh, tight end, he's only had two catches this year, and part of the reason is because of the quarterback. Well, you saw the speed that he has that time. I mean, putting the tight end in tight formation, just ran a little streak route that time, locked in with Denmark. Reed. Unfortunately, it's overthrew him. Third and 11. Here comes the blitz. And down he will go. We've got a flag on the play. Terry Cooper gets the sack. Let's see what the flag is about. I, I think what we saw was one of those grambling yellow jerseys flying in the air about the same time. I don't think there's a flag down, but Terry Cooper coming from the outside again, putting pressure on the young quarterback Rosser, making the play. Watch Terry Cooper come from right inside right there. Nobody makes the block on him. Here he comes. Boom. Grab him. Got him around the head. No flag right there. Good play by Grambling. Here's the butt by Hudak. Feeling a little pressure. DJ Gray, and we're going to have the halo penalty called. Justin Williams was in the area. Got to give him about five yards to catch the ball. DJ Clay making the fair catch signal, and Justin Williams, number 13, along with Carlos Wright, were in the area. As we await the call. A foul catch of the fence on a kicking team. Ten yard penalty. Inspired a foul. You can see you got to give him about a couple steps. Doesn't get right there. Waves him off with the fair catch. But see, I would be upset if I'm James Reese because he waited so long to make the fair catch. That's supposed to be a distinctive wave. Wasting the last second. But no harm, no foul. That's a good call. Look at that play by Bruce Eugene. Come on, Douglas is going to the house for the touchdown. Wow. A 59-yard touchdown play, and that ball was through. What a throw. They have so many weapons, Stan. You talk about, about Tremont Douglas, Calvin Colquitt. We've seen Moses Harris make a catch tonight. Well, Charles has been running. Ball. And then Thar Anderson has also been making some plays. And, and you know what the scary thing is for SWAC fans, if you're not a Grambling fan? These are young kids. <laughs> you know, you're talking about a sophomore quarterback and a junior wide receiver. Brian Morgan's PAT is good, and it is now 35 to 7. You, you hate to talk about it over and over again, but you're in man coverage. You might want to do some zone blitz or zone situation. Don't let anybody deep, but there's nothing you can do with that. Great protection, great pass, tremendous catch, and then all you got to do. Watch this now on the other side. Watch the route. And you see, you see that nobody bumps him. Nobody bumped him off the line of scrimmage. Takes it up, boom. There's a little side cut right there. Nobody ever laid a hand on him until it's too late. So Fulton tries to make a play. James Reese talked about making tackles. They didn't make it there. You can't catch him. You you only want to stop him. You can't catch him. I tell you what, man, that, that route was run like we used to run it out in the schoolyard. Nobody touch you. You just go straight up yeah. the field. Cut in. Go, go to the can. The ball. Go to the can. Go to the first car you see. Hit it right. Oop, take it to the left and go out of the way. Exactly. Yeah. We used to do that, too. Look at the numbers for Tremont Douglas tonight. Five receptions, 154 yards, and two touchdowns. He had three TDs two weeks ago against Alcorn State. A tremendous athlete, like we said, came into this game. 19 catches, 231 yards. Hey, he is on a roll tonight. Jenkins again brings it out. Out to the 20 and just shy of the 25-yard uh, line. He is pushed out of bounds. Boy, this Grambling team is impressive. They started the season rated number one in the black college, most black college polls, whether you're looking at the Sheridan or the black college and websites and what have you. They were the top team, the team to beat. And uh, we see why. Well, they lost, you know, to the team, and you'll hear from them throughout this football season. They keep it on the ground. What a hit, but a first down play picked up by Charles Anthony. So they'll move the chains. The clock will continue to tick down. Denmar Reed, the one that put the helmet on him. First and ten. 
Again, oh, play action. Rosser going deep. He's got a man. A catch, but a drop. Knocked away at the last second. Ronald Jackson was the player that it appeared to have caught the ball, but it was knocked away at the last second by the Grambling State defensive back on the play, and Jackson looks like he's hurt. Well, you had two guys in the same area. You send both of them on streaks. Michael DeGree comes up at the last minute. You almost think that should have probably been a catch. A hard play, but I think Jackson probably feels like he could have caught that ball, but DeGree comes in at the last minute to knock it away. Again to the ground game. Charles Anthony, fumble. Looks like he's gotten on top of it. But we do have a fly down. Terrific crowd for tonight's game. Chop block. It's against Tennessee State, and they've had all kinds of penalty problems tonight. Even when they've had some success, it really has dampened their momentum. If I'm grambling, I take this, I push them back, try to get good field position. You've got two timeouts remaining. On the offense, the penalty is declined, third down. Okay, like I said, I decline that penalty, make it third down, and see if we can put them in a little long passing situation. Check out this crowd. They've really embraced black college football here in Las Vegas. Third down and 10. So Grambling comes with a blitz. Twins on both sides. Here's Rosser. He's got time. A little fake. It's an incomplete pass. I know it uh, looks like Denmark Reed thinks he has an interception, but it's incomplete. And you heard clearly hit a whistle. But now the question is, did the ball hit the ground and bounce up, or did it hit a shoulder pad? I, I'm going to go on a limb. I don't know if we're going to replay on that on that side. I think that ball may have popped off a shoulder pad because if it hits the ground, it's going to die. It's not right. going to bounce up. And the official may be anticipated. So for his sake, the whistle blows, play dead. Grambling gets the ball back anyway. But we don't have one of those Ooh, let's see, red bags. Let, let's watch and see if this ball hits a shoulder. Yeah, it does. It does. It gets it gets down. His hands are maybe under. Probably does hit the ground. But again, a great effort that time by Grambling. Demar, if you can't go any further, your knees down. You're like what? Four for five tonight? No, I'm five for five. Five for five. That doesn't count though. That's no, not a penalty. That's a do over. Oh, that's a do over. Okay, I got you. <laughs> DJ Clay taking the uh, taking the hit on that. He's still down. It's one thing you do not want at this stage in the game when you are leading 35 to seven. You don't want to see any players get injured at this stage of the game. And now the question: If you're grambling, there, Doug Williams, 35-7, 51 seconds ago, two timeouts. You're going to get the ball in relatively good field position. Do you go for six more? Do you really just try to take the heart out of the Tennessee State team, or do you keep the ball on the ground, let the clock run, let's go to the house? What did you do in those situations? I'm trying to score. You really? can't ever get too many points. You can't. You, you, can't, you, just, you just can't because you never know. A, a fumble. Tennessee State scores. They get the ball back in the second half. Another score. Excitement. Another flag down on the field as they hand it off to Correll Charles, who's pushed out of bounds. Let's see what the flag is all about. But coming up on the Vegas at the half report, we're going to have the battle of the bands, the Ford Roadies, who you talked to before the game. Really interesting story. D didn't know that story before tonight. Yeah, the two guys, you want to on State yeah, Grant? On the defense, five yard penalty. Repeat first down. One's a South Carolina State grad, one's a Howard grad. Uh, two smart young kids that are traveling all around the country, going to HBCU Classics, out Ford website, Ford, and everybody's happy and on the road again, and they get the drive from Vegas back home, and I'll catch the flight. Wow. So I know. want that job. <laughs> Eugene out of the shotgun, just 22 ticks left in the first half, and he's going to go for more. Knocked away at the last second by Scott Cunningham. Great break on the ball by Scott Cunningham that time. Eugene gets plenty of time to throw this football there, and this time you can see just at the corner of the screen, Cunningham reads that break. Again, Colquitt has had a success of making the slip screen. That time, no, Colquitt comes up, makes a deflection as we watch Clay, or I just saw Clay go into the locker room, and he certainly he looked like he was holding his left shoulder. Hopefully he'll be back in the second half. 
Tyron Anderson will split up far to the left side. They've got Tremaine Douglas and Calvin Colquitt on the near side. Second down in five. 16 seconds left. Eugene going upstairs again. He's got a man. Anderson's going to be held. <laughs> I guess Dion get it said, hey, you, you're not going to get it this time. I'm going to hold you. And that was a smart play. It's only a 15-yard penalty in college football. That was the right play if, you, if you're uh, Gideon. Because, again, if he doesn't hold him, it's going to be six points. And they're not going to put any time back on the clock. <laughs> so Tennessee State trying to escape into halftime, trailing by 28 points. <laughs> Pass interference on the defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Grambling, if they play it right, can have maybe one, two, two shots. You, you try to go either up and out or throw it immediately deep. May have two chances to get a playoff here before half with eight seconds remaining. Tell you what, James Reese right now, he has to be so frustrated. He really thought his football team was a lot better. Remember back in 1998, Tennessee State started one and two, and then they went on to win eight in a row, ended up winning the Ohio Valley, and he thought this was a similar situation. Eugene with plenty of time. Now he'll take off and run. Boy, he is a big guy. 245 pounds. Hard to bring down. But he is brought down, and that's going to bring us to halftime. Our score, 35-7. Grambling State on top of Tennessee State here in the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. And that guy has been the hero of the first half, Bruce Eugene. Terrific week last week and a big victory over Alabama A&M and here in Las Vegas he is putting on a show. Grambling State on top here at halftime, 35 to seven. Here in the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. Coming up next, it's the Las Vegas halftime report. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada. 35-7, our score at halftime. Now let's take a listen to our halftime band celebration presentation presented by Honda. Honda is a proud sponsor to 47 HBCUs band halftime celebrations this year. Each HBCU band will receive a $1,000 scholarship donation and a chance to participate in the Honda HBCU Band Invitational. All this as we listen to Tennessee State's band, the aristocrat of bands, all this presented by Honda. the aristocrat of bands. Their leader, Edward Prop Graves. He is their band director.
will be back. We're here at the Las Vegas Halftime Report. Grambling State on top, 35-7. to seven. Heads. In Grambling State, total domination, 417 yards total offense. And again, Tennessee State not able to run the football very much. Passing yards not very good, 171. First downs doesn't matter. Points off turnovers. I thought we were playing basketball. It's a football game. <laughs> 30 to 6 for Grambling. Penalties. Doug Williams wants to clean that up a little. 3 of 17. Tennessee State, 8 of 65. A great football game for Jackson for Jackson State. Why well, was that Jackson State? For Grambling and for Tennessee State. Gotta have a better second. Well, and that's first. <laughs> Half stats ah, ah, presented ah. by Las Vegas. You've been thinking about Jackson State because that's who uh, Tennessee State played last week in the Southern Heritage Classic. And here comes Patrick Jenkins as he gets the second half going. Pushed out of bounds along the right sideline to shy of the 30 yard line. Jordan Gratham pushes him out of bounds. So now we can see what uh, what exactly James Reese and the Tigers of Tennessee State have talked about at halftime. They've got the talent. They were down last week in the Southern Heritage Classic to Jackson State. That's what I was thinking about. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You're all over it. First down and 10. They'll start from the 40. Again, it's Bryson Rosser. The redshirt freshman at quarterback. Quick pass in the flat. It's Carlos Wright. He breaks a tackle. And I believe that's his first reception of the game. I think it is. And again, I like that. It's an easy pass. Get the ball. It's almost like a long handoff. Get the ball into one of your players' hands. First catch of the game. Wright's got tremendous speed. Got to use those wide receivers. The easiest way to do is a little short dink passes. Get the ball in their hands. Let them make the plays. And it's surprising that they did not throw to him earlier because he's a guy that they like to get the ball into his hands. Hands. In fact, when Charles Anthony didn't play, they, they used Carlos Wright as a running back. A little fake on the play action. Rosser rolling and looking for Steve Farmer, their captain and tight end, but the pass a little too low. Rosser feeling some pressure. Michael Degree all over Rosser. What they're doing, anytime you see them in a wide set where they're not using but one tight end or the tight end's isolated, they're blitzing on the other side of the play. As you see, Michael Degree coming right in there, putting pressure on Rosser. Rosser, not much he can do, but get that ball out. And Degree, they're bull riding and bringing him down. You want to hit that quarterback, hit that quarterback, hit that quarterback, make him think about it all game long. That looked like a wrestling move. It did. Look like some WWE. Yeah, <laughs> Second and ten off the incomplete pass. They'll pitch it. It's Charles Anthony cutting it back inside. Picks up three yards, perhaps. Sugar Sanders and Charles Anthony, their two-pronged attack. We talked about this before the game. Both of them capable of running for 100 yards. And both of them has, have had some mild success. They really have. Both, like you said, have had 100-yard games. And I almost expected to see both of them in the backfield if this could have been a ball possession ground game for Tennessee State. But with them down by four touchdowns, they've got to open up the offense so you'll see one back maybe try to hit him out of the backfield or something. And then we got a penalty on this play. And, and here come the flags. And tempers getting a little bit out of control as uh, people are starting to grab face masks. Easy, easy. Well, it's hot here. I mean, I mean these guys aren't used to this heat <laughs> like this. It's hot in the making. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> well, Leonard Patton, I think Leonard Patton was at fault there because uh, they stopped. They clearly stopped the play, and he went in and pushed Bryson Rosser down to the turf. But see, Rosser down the ball, and I'm not certain if it was an offside on Grambling or not, so we, we just need to see what they're going to figure out. But again, what I like about this, nobody threw, threw a punch. You throw a punch, you're out of the ball game. A little push and a little grabbing. It's all right. You're vague. It's a little bump and grind won't hurt you. Let's, <laughs> let's see what Casey Pennington has to say about it. He's our referee tonight. And all sides on the defense, dead ball, first to foul on the defense. Both fouls will be penalized. Yeah, that was Leonard Patton. He got in and clearly there was no need. Okay. Just look 98 here. Look at this. Nice. He's down, he's down his knee. knee. Down he's his knee. knee. Okay, so it's oh, offside and there's a lot of stuff going on away from the play. But right. again, once you, you know, a lot of coaches will tell you, once you, you see that moving a guy outside down the ball, you get a free play anyway. Trust me, Stan. He pushed him down. He pushed him down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt that. All right, they'll move the chains to the 30, uh, the 34-yard line. A little play action for Rosser. Again, feeling some pressure going deep across the middle of the field. 
And it looked like there was some miscommunication on the route. C.J. Johnson was the intended receiver. Yeah, it looks like Johnson pulled up at the last moment. And looks like maybe even he pulled a hammy or either he didn't think the ball was intended. He had both Johnson and Jackson in the in the area. But just a nice pass, good protection. You look at the end of the play, you can almost see where he sees that oop just kind of looks like, hey, just let me let that go. I don't I don't know what the problem was. See, watch him pull up right there. Right there. He says, hey, I can't get that. Maybe he could. Second and ten. Rambling again, looking like they're going to blitz. And here comes the screen play to Charles Anthony. He eludes the first tackler. He's got some room. Crossing the 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. That's the one gamble that Gremlin has taken tonight that did not pay off. Well, you kind of had the feeling that Chris Brown was coming in, was closing fast, was going to make the play on Anthony. Watch this the ball just float there. Again, we said those little short passes are as good as handoffs. You want to get your talented players in the open field. Uh, get away from there. Boom, that's a good play. You don't make the tackle. Chris Brown, and then it's easy to do. You almost thought he was going to make the play at the end. A little, little deliver the blow right there at the end of the play by Moses Harris. But, hey. That's six. Oh, bounces off that crossbar and goes right in, or off the upright, I should say, and goes between, uh, goes through, and it's 14 points for Tennessee State, but they still trail 35-14 here in the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. Charles Anthony uh, run so well tonight, and they're showing his skills as a receiver, able to catch the ball coming out of the back. Feet. three-minute drive that time taking it off the kickoff for Tennessee State putting up some points on the board again and if you make a stop you know, you're talking a few moments ago before halftime about do you try to keep scoring for Grambling this is the reason why you keep trying to put points on the board Tennessee State gets a stop boom 35 21 watch this is a little float it's a little four-yard pass catch it and then watch the guys at Tennessee State look at the white shirts out there blocking ahead of the play and then it's just natural ability that time by Anthony to elude one defensive back Chris Brown, and then they go in there, and then at the end of the play, you can see where uh, Octavius Bond gets it just a little too late. Doug says, what? What? He scored? you got to be kidding me. I tell you, that first move that Charles Anthony made, that look, kind of looked like Barry Sanders. When oh, yeah. Skipped out of the way. So James Reese's offense has done exactly what he wanted on their first drive of the third quarter. Now the question is, can the defense rise to the occasion? They have not been able to stop Grambling. Well, if you're looking for any 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 patterns or any tendencies, traditionally in the three games that Grambling has played, the third quarter has been the quarter where they have had letdowns or given up points. They've given up 31 points in the three games, you know, in the second half and 34 in the fourth quarter. So there is hope for Tennessee State. Tennessee State's best quarter is the third quarter also with 22 points. So, hey, there's still hope yet for T.S., T.S., T.S.U. All right. I like it, man. I like it. <laughs> Hang with me. I'll teach you how to be a cheerleader. I'll tell you where to hang out, the bands we can eat, the stuff we can do here. So now the JW Marriott, that's where we're going tonight, right? That's what they tell me. Las Vegas Silver Dollar Football Classic. Get all I can get. I got to get out of here. I got to get home. Joey Hudak puts a foot into it. Octavius Bond will let it go out of bounds, and that's not exactly what you want. That is a very, very costly penalty as uh, tempers are starting to flare out on the field. While we have this moment, just want to say that uh, the NBC network is your family's urban television network for positive programming. The entire family can watch. Call your local cable operator to get NBC network. Get all these black college games. They actually had three games Richard on got a bound. Ball be played from 35-yard line. First time in, 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 in known black college football history where you've had three football games for the same day all played, carried by one network. Thank you, NBC. Congratulations. So if you don't have NBC, call somebody. Pick up the phone. Call them. Say, I want my NBC. A lot of shifting done on the offense for Grambling. The third game of a triple header here on NBC. And... Eugene will take the snap. He's got plenty of time and again firing and again he had his guy. Tyron Anderson dropped the ball. And I think that time Deion Giddens along with Scott Cunningham had something to do with it and Anderson's still down. 
inside route again. They're using they're using Anderson as the wide guy, as or either in the slot. That time he was in the slot. Just a nice little post route, matched up one on one. You'll see him come right into your picture right there. He's got to play on it. Ball maybe a little bit behind gives Giddens the time to recover, and then he can lay a blow on Anderson. Anderson lay it hard on that shoulder. Watch this pass right there, just a little bit behind. See how it flutters right there, and that's what slows it down. If he puts it about a foot ahead of him, Anderson catches that ball. It slows him down. Giddens is able to recover and make the defensive play. Anderson able to make his way off the field under his own power. Holding that right shoulder that looked like he just dropped that ball, as you mentioned, staying a little bit behind him. Yeah. 13.09 left to go. Here in the third quarter, Grambling on top of Tennessee State. 35 to 14. Big defensive stop now for Tennessee State. They hand it off for L. Charles. He's pulled down after picking up four yards, and that'll bring up a third down. Grambling has been outstanding on the third and six. Grambling has made a lot of big plays on third down tonight. Aaron Harris, the defensive end on that play, made that stop. They're really high on him up in Nashville, thinking this kid's got the potential to be one of the better defensive players in Tennessee State's history. And, you know, we, we talked about the great players at, at Grambling, Tennessee State, you know, Richard Dent, Claude Humphreys, Joe Gilliam, man. I mean, they're great players all over this place. He had a monster game last week. Five tackles, two sacks in the Southern Heritage Classic. Eugene out of the shotgun on third down. Again with time. He's rolling right, trying to buy himself some more time. Across the middle and nearly intercepted. That was Issa Rahman who had it right in his hands. And so the Tennessee State defense has done its job. Rahman nearly had an inter nearly had an interception. He had plenty of room to run. Oh, good job by Tennessee State. We said they had to make a defensive stand, putting pressure on Eugene, flush him out of the pocket, and Rahman says, oh, man, I should have had that ball. My goodness, he was looking for six. He got to catch it first. Now Marcus Yanez will come on to punt. He had some pressure, and he gets off a short punt. Just got it away, but it will take a Tennessee State bounce. And Tennessee State will have good field position. So, Stan, are we seeing a little momentum start to shift here? Well, we very well. You got to handle the football. But Doug Williams says, hey, fellas, let's stop them right now. Break in the action. 35-14, Grambling on top. Welcome back. They call it the Silver City, and appropriately enough, we're at the Silver Dollar Classic, 35-14 our score, but we're seeing a, a rally in the in the making by Tennessee State. Ball spotted at the 35-yard line, first and 10 for Bryson Rosser, and blitz here coming. comes that blitz, and this time Rosser will not be able to escape. I believe that was uh, Antoine Smith brought him down. Yeah, if you want to disrupt the team's offense or their rhythm, you start sending a couple of players. Good defensive call that time by Grambling. Now, what you've got to do if you're TSU, you see seven, eight guys in the box. You've got to make the audible. And again, the young quarterback, maybe not knowing his progressions, you try to get somebody over the top. But that time, a good job by Grambling. Take some of this momentum back from Tennessee State. Rosser paid the price on that play. He'll again go back to the air, this time going deep. He's got a man. It's underthrown, but nearly able to pull it in with C.J. Johnson, but the ball simply was underthrown. Yeah, and again, that comes because of the pressure. Keeping Rossler inside the pocket, not allowing him to scramble. He's got to make the quicker throw. Wasn't quite ready to make that pass, but again, put the ball there. Great effort by Johnson to, to, uh, to try to make the play. Octavius Bond almost had a pick that time, but again, good pressure by the Gremlin defense, forcing now TSU into a third and 13, a third and long situation. And again, looks like they want to blitz, but they step back. Rosser has time. He wants to go deep again, and he had a man and knocked away at the last second by Aaron Bridges. And the Tennessee State people are going to cry for a fire. Not cry, but they're going to fuss definitely. And maybe cry, too, about a pass in the fierce. But this is great defensive coverage by Bridges. He never really sees the football. And at the last second, he kind of gets his shoulder around, able to deflect it. But it was also a great route by the wide receiver to deke him. Let him think, because you tell him, turn your heads. Don't turn. They're coming after this ball. What do you think? They don't. 
Oh, one man sneaks through. Hudak is able to get it off. And here is George Pigo, who is in for DJ Clay. And Pigo brought down at the 40-yard line, but we do have a flag on the field. Now, one official tosses Beanbag. I don't know if he lost his flag somewhere in the, in the midst of the band and the flag girls or all that stuff or what, but there is a flag down near midfield, so we'll see what this is. Probably some uh, block in the back penalty, I would think. Maybe TSU will have to kick this over. KC Pennington, our referee tonight, has earned his money. So it looks like a face mask against Tennessee State. So just when you thought Tennessee State had a little momentum going. Another penalty and the offense ineffective on that last drive. Let's see. A lot of conversation. They're talking with Bruce Eugene to find out what uh, Doug Williams wants to do. Again, if, I, if I'm grambling, and I may be wrong on this, but I, I make uh, I make Tennessee State kick that ball they again. Can kick I mean, it again. Uh, you know, that's they, exactly they've had some troubles do. with uh, the snaps have been a little high, been a little slow getting it off. I still think there's, there's a, a potential punt block in here someplace tonight. You've been talking about it all night. They got a man through, but. Joey Hudak was just able to get it off. So they'll send Pago back out, and Hudak will have to punt it away again. And Pago, he is a speedster, blazing speed. The fact that he's back there is probably a sign that DJ Clay has done from the night. Yeah, I think. Face mask on the offense. 15 yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. You know, on that on that reception early and uh, late in the second half, Clay went down on his shoulder, and I don't think he's returned from the locker room. So you get Pigo out there, and he's a speedster, as you mentioned. I mean, certainly the potential to break it, but I think Grambling's going to get an excellent field position. Great decision by Doug Williams and staff to make him kick it again. And this is big. They march him back 15 yards, and if you consider that Joey Hudak only averages about 35 yards a punt, this is a huge penalty. Come out on plus territory. In fact, Pago will move all the way up to the 50. Snap is good. We got a little pressure, and again, it's a really short kick, but it comes up with a big Tennessee State bounce rolling out to about the 48-yard line, 49-yard line. That's where Grambling State will come on. You can just see the frustration there by the head coach, James Reese. He is a proud Tennessee State Tiger, played here in the, the late 80s, was a fullback, and has been with Tennessee State ever since he played. Became a grad assistant, a running backs coach, worked his way up to the offensive coordinator in 99 when Tennessee State went undefeated. He was their offensive coordinator and then took over. Very ironic. You've got the a grad of a Grambling coaching Grambling, the Tennessee State man coaching TSU. Now Grambling will uh, run the ball to their talented running back, Correll Charles. Grambling so tough. They can run it. They can pass it. They play pretty good defense. And it's what you want, a balanced football team. If you take away the run, I'll beat you with the pass, vice versa. You're talking about Coach Reese, very ironic. His mom and dad both attended Tennessee State. His wife is the basketball coach at Tennessee State. His wife's actually the volleyball, yeah, the volleyball coach. coach. That's right, volleyball. That's right. No, it had a ball in it. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> but I, I say that because their uh, their athletic director actually was the, the, it was, the right. was the basketball coach. Here again, Eugene, and he just has a he has a gun as he completes it to uh, Byron Anderson. Check that. That's number 83. That's Adrian Caesar. So now we're starting to see some of the depth of Grambling as they start to work in some of the second stringers. Keep bringing receivers in. Nice time. Good protection. Looks over the field. First progression not there. There's your second one. Good catch by Caesar coming back to make the play. Not a lot you can do if you're Scott Cunningham with Tennessee State. You just you do a good job taking something away. Come back and get the catch. First and ten from the 37. Correll Charles. Bulls his way up to the 25-yard line, and he's going to have another first down for Grimm. P.V. Woods able to bring him down as the Tigers now begin to work on that clock. 
Great blocking by the interior line. There was a nice little takedown by number 52, Terry Riley. And all you got to do is give him a few feet, and boom, Carrillo Charles can do the rest. 35 14 here in the third. And we have whistles before this one's even able to get started. They're going to reset the play clock. Okay, look at the top of your screen. You'll see in the slot, number five, Tremont Douglas. He's going to be matched up. I can't tell if that's a fool or who, but let's see if they're going to try to work on this. A little post corner right, a little slant, and they get somebody on him covered. Yeah, he had a lot of pad. Eugene just has had all day to pass the ball. As Tennessee State has not been able to put pressure on him today, which is interesting. Last week against Jackson State, their defense was very hungry. They had five sacks against Jackson State. But tonight, they have not been able to really get the Bruce Eugene. Well, this scrambling offensive line averages about 285, 290 pounds. So, again, you've got some big horses there that good, do a good job in pass protection. One thing that Doug talked to me about was his, uh, his line was kind of quick. The big guys, but they've got good footwork. And certainly tonight, you know, Eugene's been pressured a few times. But for the most part, he's had a lot of time to find his receivers. The line is the only part of the scrambling offense where they had returning starters. Exactly. Two returning starters on the offense, period. Little screen play underneath but Eugene kind of underthrew it. Correll Charles was there but the ball was thrown low. James Maxwell put in a little pressure that time on, on the quarterback Eugene. But again, look at that double team right there at the top of your screen. Take Riley at that little twist. With four guys coming. Boom. The screen there. Catch the ball first. Watching his little low. You're under pressure, but that's okay. Catch that football and away it goes. Sets up another third down. Do we go to Tremont Douglas again? Do we try to slip screen? Only time will tell, my friend. Big third down play here. Third and ten. Timeout call. They have a ball. <laughs> no, there it is. It's on the field there. They, would they changed balls between every play. Oh, I see. Moisture, and they were trying to get ball. So that you know, you know, Neil, okay, got to drive football. <laughs> There's a good side of that Wilson 101. It's a passing ball. A little thin. So now, kind of think you got to drive football. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to throw, go. go. <laughs> throw this ball. They're going to throw this ball. They're going to pass. All right. Here. They're out of the shotgun, so there is a good chance that they're going to do that. Eugene, here comes the pressure. Rolling, firing. He's got a man, but he overthrew him. He was looking for his big tight end. Yeah, that was Gershon Jesse. Caught a touchdown pass last week. He had him wide open, but overthrew him. So now this will bring up fourth down. Well, with this pressure, they force him out of the pocket. What you can see is Jesse's turn to his left. He was looking for the post route. That's where the ball threw, but it went over the other shoulder. He had to turn around. When he turned around, he couldn't refocus, find the ball. It goes incomplete. But again, the versatility. We keep talking about Bruce Eugene. 6'1", 240 pounds, only a sophomore. Big kid, has some mobility, great upside. He really reminds me of Dante Culpepper, who plays for the Minnesota Vikings in the NFL. So here's Brian Morgan on for a 33, or actually a 43-yard attempt, and I believe it was blocked. It was blocked. I believe Steve Farmer may have gotten a hand on it. So uh, Brian Morgan, the All-American kicking candidate, has had his problems tonight, but that's about the only problem for Grambling. They're up 35-14 here in the inaugural Civil Dial I-14. And let's take a look at, check out these cords. As if Tennessee State doesn't have enough problems trying to get all this sorted out. <laughs> Coach Reeson, man, we came out here now. Can he carry the cord, man? All you got to do is just keep it wrapped around. <laughs> Hard night when you get the court guy having trouble. Quick pass as a new quarterback has checked in for Tennessee State, number 15, Kenny Irby. So uh, apparently Bryson Rosser is going to get a rest now, and they're going to see if uh, Kenny Irby can do anything. We've got a player that's down on the field for Grambling. Taking one knee, and let's see who that is. That looks like uh, Michael Degree. Degree's had a, a nice evening. He, he looks like he'll bounce back. Yeah, it looked like he might have got the wind knocked out of him. There you see the red shirt freshman, Bryson Rosser.
It is good to see Grambling football back on time. <laughs> that is, if you're a Grambling fan, <laughs> if you hear people at Swack might not agree with that. I think just for black college football in general, when you look at Grambling and what they have meant over the years, and there were some points there when Coach Robinson was there towards the end of his tenure where they had some down years, and, and to see them turn this thing around and get those back on top, it's, it's a nice story. Oh, I agree with you exactly. And the one thing that we both have talked about on camera and off is the name recognition. You know, you may not know a lot about black college football. Hopefully over the year watching NBC and other things, you will find out more about it if you're an initiated. But certainly the name Grambling. Gambling State is something everybody knows about. Irby throws that deep ball well. That's one of the things they talk about. He's the transfer from Marshall where he played behind Brian Leftwich, but uh, it's three and out once again for the Tennessee State Tigers. Puts him in a tough position to come in and try to ignite this thing. Well, exactly. Very live arm. It's, it started some ball games for him, thrown a couple of touchdowns. It's overthrows his receiver this time. But again, it's a bad position to be in, but I think it may be a good call by Coach Reese and the state because you want to give him a look. There's no pressure on him there. Let's see what he's going to do. And Rosser's had a nice evening. He's made some big plays, missed a couple of passes. They put pressure on him. You can see potential in both of these quarterbacks. Remember, Rosser is a, is a, is a fresh shirt freshman, and Irby's a sophomore. Budak gets one off. This is probably his best punt of the night. Pigo will take it at the 36. He's got room as he cuts it outside. Still on his feet. There is a flag down on the play. But he got absolutely hammered by Ricky Gibbs. But we do have a flag down. Pigo cut it outside, but he paid the price. And this may come back. Well, Aaron Bridges absolutely cold caught somebody. He couldn't quite see it. I don't know. I was watching that whole play. I don't know if, it, if that should have been a flag called it in. I think the shoulders of the defensive player were around. It'd be interesting to see that. But it was a – you, you got to like the legal call hold. Back, return team, 10-yard penalty, spotted foul, first down. Take another look. And watch coming out of the left-hand side of your screen right there. Boom. Yeah. You know, yeah. He, he, he really got a piece of him. I think that was a – watch this right there. So you got to see if, the, if, his, if his shoulders are turned around the play. Couldn't quite tell on that replay. But, again, you, know, you like that effort out of your defensive backs, your special team players, making – trying to make blocks. Bruce Eugene hands off. Correll Charles. And this time the white jerseys pull him down. Aaron Harris there to snuff that play. A loss of three yards on the play, bring up second and 13. But what I like about Tennessee State, they're still playing. You're down 35-14, you know, a fumble, another play. You still got another quarter to play of football. Don't give up right now. Make this thing crazy where you can't come back. I like that. A little enthusiasm out there by the big fella, Mr. Harris. So, yeah, we ready. We ready. You know, you understand. It's football game. You do. And they need their defense to make a big play. Bruce Eugene, he is so impressive with those little out patterns as he makes the completion to Calvin Copeland. This guy has got a first-rate arm. He's got a quick release. He really does. And Colquitt makes that catch. And you see Giddens out there who's been victimized a couple of times. That time Jermaine Beal in on the tackle. But what the important thing of that play was, you did not allow Grambling. There's gang tackling there not to get the first down. Third and three. You stop him if you're TSU, you get good field position potentially. Giddens is becoming a poster boy out there. They'll send Tremon Douglas in motion. Eugene again with time complete underneath. They got the first down. It was the motion man, Tremont Douglas, who makes the catch, and the chains will move. And we had talked about it earlier about not seeing very much motion that time, getting your outstanding athletes a chance to get the ball. What I also liked about Douglas's route, he needed three yards. He picked up seven on the play. So many times you see receivers, you know, you need six or seven, they'll run the route for five yards and end up short. Keeps that drive alive, keeps the chains moving. Good point. 540 left to go here in the third. Back to the ground. Pick up a five that time by Carell Charles. 
who has done an outstanding job. We talk about Tennessee State. They've got a two prong attack, but Correll Charles is pretty much it for Grambling, and he has held his own. On the ground, Correll Charles has certainly been the man for Grambling. But again, you know, watch this. Takes him up, boom, right there. Bill gets the hit right there. And then Charles, what I like, a good running back, always leaning forward, trying to stretch and get an extra yard and protecting the football. Hadn't seen a lot of turnovers in this ball game. Yeah. Good point. We've seen some balls on the ground, but fumbles have been recovered. Charles on the draw play. Cuts it outside. He's got a blocker out there as he cuts it across the 40-yard line, just shy of the 35 as the Tigers of Grambling State continue to drive. Ahmed Safiula made the tackle, and what a long night it has been for him. Junior from Decatur, Georgia. They need a big play by their defense, and they haven't gotten it yeah, so far yeah. tonight. And Safiula, I mean, uh, had a had a fumble return early in the season against Prairie View, 85 yards for a touchdown. They've had some big plays. They had two touchdowns already this season of over 40 yards by the defense. So yeah, right now would be a time to, to for Tennessee State to make that big play. Again, it's Charles, and this time the white jerseys get him. Number 95, James Maxwell making the tackle. As the clock continues to tick down, four minutes, 15 seconds left to go here in the third, and we've got one of the Tigers of Tennessee State down. Well, you got a lot of guys right now that I believe cramping, that's cramping up. It's, it's very he has a very deep offensive football team, and they played pretty good defense as well. Three and a half left, and a timeout called. Bruce Eugene didn't like what he saw, and Rambling will call a timeout. Our score once again here in the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. 35-14, Grambling on top. And welcome back. 35-14, Darren Horton, Stan Luter here at the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. And it's been all Tigers of Grambling State, the Yellow Tigers. Hey, you got to be specific when you start talking about these Tigers now. The Yellow Tigers have beaten the, uh, the Blue Tigers. White and Blue Tigers. Eugene with way too much time, and he uh, completes the pass out in the flat. Even though Scott Cunningham brings down Adrian Caesar, the completion is made. And you're right about this. Again, good protection again for the Grambling guys. Gets a chance to look over. It's locked in on one receiver. That ball stays out there a long time. May could have been picked off. But again, a good catch by Caesar. And Cunningham having a heck of a time bringing him down. Rope him, Cowboy. Rope him. Correll Charles keeps the clock running. Still 2.55 left to go here in the third quarter. The third quarter, I said, as they hand out the uh, the MVP ballots. I'm going to wait before I fill mine I, out. I, I was wondering about this. Did, did I miss something? I mean, did I, I, I really go to sleep through a quarter? <laughs> I still think this game's not over. We got time. But Tennessee State has to make a play. Bruce Eugene with time floats it up through the end zone. Good decision by the sophomore. Throw it away. Nobody can get it. Won't be picked off. You live to play third down. This has to be disheartening for Tennessee State. Last week they took on the top team in the SWAC East in Jackson State. They lost a heartbreaker at the final seconds on a field goal to Jackson State. And tonight they got a chance to see the power of the SWAC West. And that Jackson State squad is really awesome. Robert Kent, I saw him about two weeks ago against ANT, throw for over 500 yards, was the 1AA player of the week. Hey, Bruce Eugene's close to that same number. And he's still got another quarter to play, 412 yards. Obviously a career high. Eugene again, back to pass, looking underneath. Looking that time for Corey Brownfield, but Deion Giddens that time getting the better of the, the deal. 
Again, Grambling does a great job. All their wide receivers are coming back to the football. They run excellent routes. That's a timing route there, a little slant. And again, ball just goes through Brownfield's hand. Look the one way, take the step up. There's the pass right inside, a little curl, a little post inside, not quite there. And there's my man. <laughs> then just said, hey, Gibbons said, not, not, not again, not, not again, please. So this will be a 27-yard field goal for Brian Morgan, and uh, he misses that one as well. You know, he's an All-American candidate when the season began. We, we told you he led the SWAC in scoring last year with 93 points. But in all honesty, he has had a horrible season. Well, the first kick that was missed in the first half it was, was holder error, I right. think. The second one was, uh, you know, as a soccer-style kicker, sometimes they have a tendency not to get the ball up. You've got to get under it, get a, get a lift on it. And that time, just a bad break. The ball faded out to a little bit to the right and hit the goalpost. He's wondering, why me? Why me? <laughs> well, he's one of eight on the season yeah, now. Yeah. And you're talking about a guy that last year tore it up. Well, you know, you get into rhythms. I mean, you know, it, it's just like anything else. You're hot sometimes. You can't miss. Right now, he's going through a tough friend. But the thing about kickers, they always know there's another kick left in them. You get ready for the next time, and maybe he nails the next one. Kenny Irby now checks in. It's going to be uh, Charles Anthony trying to reverse it all the way to the other side of the field. He probably ran about 20 yards to uh, lose maybe a yard. Yeah, yeah. Got me tied. Is there a face mask on that play? No. Certainly look close. Tell you what, the Tennessee State Tiger football team may be struggling, but the uh, the aristocrat of bands, <laughs> they're having a party. Man. Oh, wait. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Told you, band warning. They got a band warning. They lowered they lowered the value a little bit there. Out of the shotgun. Fumble on the snap. Ball loose. Grambling saying they got it and they do. And, and you're gonna laugh at this, but you know that that happened because of that band warning. Because the center forgot that the quarterback was in the shotgun. If you watch this snap, it's a short snap. Watch this snap. Watch this right now. Watch that. Watch that. See? He didn't quite get there. He forgot. He forgot he wanted to get in protection. Didn't get the ball back there. He he didn't never get the ball up. Exactly. Off the just had a middle lapse right there. And watch the quarterback. See, he said, see, he's with heavy hands under there. He didn't have his hands on his shotgun. They kind of made a mental mistake. The first really major mental error that Tennessee State's made today. And unfortunately, it's going to probably cost them six. Yeah, that was their captain, too, Rashad Shaw. Eugene again out of the shotgun, going to the end zone, knocked away. A little too high. Ahmad Safiula. He has played an excellent football game tonight, despite the, re the results on the, uh, the scoreboard. Again, the one thing that I like about Eugene, he's not afraid to keep throwing it. This time, maybe might won't take that back. Throws in the coverage. Good job by Safula getting there to def make that deflection. He's been busy. Safula, Gideon's of your names. We've called an awful <laughs> lot tonight, you know? Yeah, they've been uh, out on an island, as they like to say. Look at the cushion there of that receiver in the slot. Gene rolling out. He's got all. He's going to keep it. He's got nothing but end zone in front of him. Does Didn't he get, get in? in? Didn't get in. No. And Deion Giddens stopped the, prevented the touchdown. <laughs> and the funny thing, watch this. Again, great job defensively with Tennessee State. Not allowed. He's got time. He's got time. Should have probably decided to take it in. But watch this. 240 hitting 185. It wasn't even fair. I know. It wasn't even fair. The big quarterback rumbling and bumbling knocked him out. He said, pick it on me again. Big boy. And he, I just think he lost 30 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Full house backfield. To the ground. Charles. Touchdown. Terrell Charles takes it in. A yard out. And now the lead is 41 to 14.
struggled running the football for for uh, the first couple of games, but they they have certainly got the running game together. As Brian Morgan puts it through, 42-14 with a minute to go here in the third. Great blocking by the offensive line of Grambling, Terry Riley, Brandon James, Lance Wright. All you got to do is fall forward from a yard away. Kareel Charles with his second touchdown of the evening. 42-14, our score with a minute to go here in the third. Doug Williams, what a job he has done with this program. Two years ago, they went 10-2, and two, won the Black College National Championship last year. Where's 10 Doug and going? One. Where's Doug? Game's not over yet. Doug, after you got one, is he sneaking away? The, <laughs> Where are you going? That's not fair. The camera guy should be getting that. <laughs> Let, give the coach a break. I mean, my goodness. Can they come away with some privacy? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> actually what it was going was there's a phone cable under there. And oh. He's going to get on the phone to try to make sure you get an earlier flight out. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. We see it all. Well, it's rambling state. They are dominant again. We talked about it two years ago. They went, uh, went 10 and 2, won the Black College National Championship. Then last year, 10 and 1, and won it back to back. And now they say they're going for the three feet. Last run back by Carlos Wright. We talk about this classic, our official attendance tonight, 22,537, and you add this classic to some prestigious ones that already exist. Of course, the granddaddy of them all, the Bayou. Yeah, you go down to New Orleans at the end of the year, Southern against this Grambling team, the Magic City Classic in Indianapolis. I mean, the Circle City, I'm sorry, the Magic City down in Alabama. Birmingham Southern Heritage was last week. Urban League's going on this weekend up in New York. Atlanta football next week. That's Tennessee State versus Bam you, the Rattlers. Hasn't heard much out of them lately, but bet your bottom dollar. Billy Joe had those guys ready. I'm going to that game next Are week. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm going. I'm going. That'd be nice. I'm going. Down I'm going. The, uh, I'm going. Gotta go. Down to the ATL. Got it. Well, actually, there's three other games. Morehouse is playing at home that day. Uh -huh. Clark Atlanta's playing that Big day. Ball. Ball start on the offense. Uh, yeah, penalty. And Morris Brown's playing that day. So I'm going to try to catch all four ball games. Wow. You're going to be a busy <laughs> man. Are you, are you going to announce all four? No, I might. I might. I might. I might. No. Depends on the mood I'm in. Okay. I get there. I may just say, uh, do that game, coach it, <laughs> officiate it, call it. I don't know. Depends on how I feel. First and 15 off the penalty. Tennessee State trying to run the clock down here, trying to run the ball, get something going. And Sugar Sanders on that last carry. And that may do it for the third quarter. 30 seconds left. They'll probably be able to get another playoff. When you talk about this for, for a first year classic, unbelievable. This has been that's, really that's well, great. Well run. Congratulations to the city of Las Vegas, the Silver Dollar Classic Committee. Everybody had anything to do with this. Those urban sports guys that are working their butts off back in Charlotte, you know, Derek and Laura and Rocky and Janet and Micah and Tom. Everybody's doing a great job there. It's moving this thing. Hey, John Sandler, hey, congratulations to everybody. Derek, you did a great job. Thank you. Got another quarter to go, though, but you I know, know. It's I know just we in case, got, yeah, we you know, I forget to do this later. I'm just telling people, hey, exactly. so 22,000 for the first year of a football yeah. classic. This has the potential of Major great growth. Success. Yes, no question. And they, they had within three days of announcing it, they had sold 15,000 tickets. Yeah, and then I think the step show last night had about 13,000 at the Thomas and Mack Center. So next year will be bigger and better. Third down play and another sack by the Tigers of Grambling. It's Terry Cooper. I believe that's his third sack of the day. Well, it becomes very easy when you're up by as much as Grambling's up by 28 points. You have a tendency to think that Tennessee State's going to try to get back in it with passing. You can send linebackers. You ISO defensive backs and say, hey, fellas, go after the ball. And James Reese says, hey, we got one more quarter. Let's keep playing. We have reached the end of the third quarter. 42-14 here in the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. Grambling leading. We really are enjoying the scenes here in Las Vegas. You take a look at the strip downtown. 
42-14 is our score here, and as we begin the fourth quarter, Hudak felt some pressure, but he gets off a good one that's going to push Pigo all the way back to his own, uh, I believe that's the 46-yard line, and that's where Bruce Eugene will continue uh, the offensive attack. Let's take a look at the J.W. Marriott third quarter statistics. Well, it really doesn't matter about the numbers. I mean, look at that. 412 passing yards, only 90 for, for Tennessee State, 106 yards rushing, but they've had big, important runs if you're grambling. And the first down is a moot point. This has been a good football game, a solid game for grambling. Tennessee State, a couple of errors. It didn't take advantage of a couple of things. And this team has just been very strong tonight, those grambling Tigers. Bruce Eugene hands it off, and they're going to really try to work this clock here and get, get this game over with as they hand it off to Correll Charles. Now you have to wonder if you're going to see the freshman Gary Cooper, who actually started their second game. And Cooper was having a, a very nice game against uh, Alcorn and went down with cramps. Eugene came in, threw a couple of touchdown passes, found D.J. Clay at the end of the ball game 12 seconds ago to win it for him, and, and Eugene's been back in the rotation. But, you know, so he, I tend to think you may see him at the end of this football game just to give him a few more snaps. Eugene again going to the air, feeling some pressure. Pass a little bit too high. Again, looking for tonight's star, Tremont. Douglas, and I'm telling you, Eugene got hammered. Here's where you have to start to ask yourself, at what point do you take this quarterback out? Well, you, you do, but you also think about the fact that this is only his fourth start. Nice hit right there. He'll get up from that. But again, this is only his fourth start, so you're also trying to get him a few snaps under his gun. One start last year. This has been his third start of his uh, of his sophomore season. That was Jermaine Beal, and I, I looked like Beal was the smaller of the two men. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and nine. Eugene again all day to pass it. Knocked away. Oh, what an incredible catch. They're going to give it to him. Yeah, he, he made a terrific catch. Calvin Colquitt. It looked like it was knocked away by Ahmad Safiula. But well, take a look at this play. Again, Eugene looking, 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 pressure on him, puts it out there on the line. Watch the catch. Watch the concentration by Colquitt. Bounces up, and he brought it down. And watch this from this side. I think the ground helped him catch it, but at 42 14, we're not going to get mad about it. Watch this bounce right there on his shoulder. He had that against his helmet, too. And you can't really see what happens when it goes down, but give him a great catch. Hey, that makes highlight material. Darrell Charles. We'll give him the catch. Anyway. Maybe a yard. <laughs> I think that was a that was a terrific catch. I don't think that touched the ground. You look at this Grambling team and they got embarrassed in their opening game against McNeese State 52 to 20. But they were young. They only had two offensive starters back from last year, two offensive linemen, and Terry Riley and Brandon James. And uh, these young guys have grown up quickly because now, three games later, they are looking like a juggernaut. Yeah, and, and, and Tennessee State, excuse me, McNeese State is one of the top five teams in one yeah. AA football. And so, you know, they didn't lose to a, to a bad team. Right, no. Ten McNeese State is very good this year. In fact, we were talking to Doug Williams about it as we take another look at his play. Uh, but Doug Williams said that, uh, he said, if we would have got him last year, we would have beat them. Yeah. Because he had a terrific quarterback last year, but he had a, a new young quarterback coming into a situation that needed some time just to kind of get his feet under. I think it's safe to say that Bruce Eugene's feet are solidly planted. Again, out of the shotgun. Deep pass again, looking for Douglas. That time, Giddens was there to make the play. Look 
at the look at the strength of this arm. This ball travels in the air about 50 yards and, and not a lot of flutter in it, right? This over throws the wide receiver Douglas Giddens that time. Good coverage. The only way you can throw it is to make him extend. Doesn't let him get to the inside post. So Tennessee State gets a stop, and we will see the services of punter Marcus Yanez, who doubles as a linebacker, but is actually an excellent punter. Transfer from LSU. Snap is low and it's blocked, but uh, we have whistles down, uh, whistles blown before the uh, play got off. Timeout. Uh, Timeout on Grambling. I was half right. It was a block tonight. Yeah. That's yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> six, six for six tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we got a break of the action. I scored 42 14 here in the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. We will be back. Welcome back, 42-14. Stan, you know the game's in hand when the coach is uh, having a little stack. Well, yeah, it was a long day. I mean, pregame was like 3 o'clock. It's like 10 there. They're a little hungry, so you, you get some wings up there. I mean, they didn't share. That's my only problem with it. How about this linebacker? He is an excellent punter. Jenkins fields it, and he's going to pay the price. Yeah, you know, you just have some wings and... Uh, Hey, we got we got 12 minutes and 17 seconds to go here. Let's have some. Uh, not a lot of plays you can call right now, you know. But the thing that I'm upset about, like I said, they're not sharing. We're next door. Hey, yo. I know, man. Well, we got this glass here. Maybe we can send our stage manager in. Can you get us some wings, my man? <laughs> so, uh, boy, a long night for uh, Tennessee State, but they are still fighting. Kenny Irby, the quarterback. The night started with Bryson Rosser, the redshirt freshman. They'll pitch it. It's Charles Anthony trying to get it outside, and he'll stop the clock. No, actually, the clock will continue to run. Okay, stayed inbounds. Now we. Uh, is he working on our wings? He's working on the wings. Okay. Because if we can't get some wings, I'll send pizza over <laughs> some. <ain't I? laughs> Maybe we can have our spotter, Brian Nichols, <laughs> run and get us some hot dogs off the media tape. Pass blocked. Fumble recovered and taken into the end zone. What a play by Grambling. Touchdown by Michael Dagry. We have talked about Dagry all night. I actually think his arm was in motion. Again, this is one of those times when you wish you had replay in college football, but they come on a rush. We've talked about blitzing. I think that's Dagree that makes the play, actually, doesn't it? Yeah. That's Dagree. Push right. You see his arm is, is moving forward. Ball's batted up, so then he kicks the live ball. Boom, boom. Watch this coming. Watch Dagree coming from the right-hand part of your screen. And, and ball was back in a passing motion. I would have called that a, a block, like you said, an incomplete pass. But if they don't, touchdown, Grambling. Michael Dagree gets a gets a deflection and also a recovery and force fumble and a touchdown. A lot of stats in one play. Wow. Brian Morgan on. And the PAT is good. Make it 49 to 14. Talk about putting a period on a paragraph. 49-14, Grambling in full control. Tonight, uh, is that where we're heading tonight? <laughs> yeah, we're oh, yeah. Sure. We're no, we're going plans. to J.W. Marriott. J.W. Marriott. There you go. <laughs> okay. 49 14 hour score. Grambling with a dominant performance tonight in the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. You talk about Tennessee State Grambling. We, we mentioned this at the beginning of our broadcast tonight. The fact that these are two of the proudest traditions in all of black college football. We're expecting a little bit more competitive battle. Here's Jenkins taking it from the 10 up the left side and punished once again by those yellow jerseys, those yellow Tigers. Reginald Prelo led the way. Talk about James, uh, James Reese and all that he has done. At Tennessee State, they actually have 12 black college national championships to Grambling's 11. And of course, Big John Merrick, 20 years, TSU. Uh, 
172 wins. He actually had a 77% winning percentage. 111 NFL players, including Richard Dent, Anthony Pleasant of the world champion New England Patriots. So uh, they are normally a lot more competitive than what we're seeing tonight. And, and, and you, you know, you cannot forget. When people think about Tennessee State. A lot of names come out. You did, but you one name you got to mention to me. Rest in peace, Jefferson Street Joe Gilliam. I mean, that, that brother could throw some football. You know, yeah. Tennessee State's always had great athletes, great academics. We talked about earlier, and so yeah, they, they'll be back. They'll be back tonight. It's just been a grambling night, but the risk has a band. They're still jamming. They are jamming. You, know, you talk about Joe Gillum and Doug Williams, really the guys that have kind of laid the foundation for the many African-American quarterbacks that we see in the NFL today. Screenplay, Sugar Sanders cuts it back, still on his feet. Close to a first down, but I believe he's going to be about a yard shy. Bring up a third and one. Yeah, but you know, when you're also talking about that history of those two guys, a name that somehow gets forgotten in all this is, is James Harris, Shaq yeah. Harris, yeah. who actually was, probably, I think, one of the first, if not the right. first, African-American quarterback when he played with Buffalo. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of great football. Tank Younger, the first NFL you know, play, player to be drafted. Play. Boom, there's so much that goes on. Tennessee State. And Greenwood, FAMU, great history themselves. a t Jackson State, Tess, Tuskegee, the winningest black college program of all is Tuskegee. And did you know, there's a little no history fact for you today. Did you know where the first college football game was ever played and who played it? You know. Is that, was that Livingstone? Livingstone and Johnson C. Smith, formerly known as Biddle College. Wow. Thank you very much. Wow. See the stuff you learn when you hang out with me. I wonder how you know that. Well, I was at the game, the 100th anniversary game. That's one way I know, but, you know, I mean, I read a lot. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile. <laughs> there are players uh, everywhere. <laughs> oh, we still got a game? Yeah, we still got a game. Oh, okay. Guess what? Charles Anthony's shy on that third and one play. The Tigers of Grambling State are not giving anything away. So now we're going to see another punt. Hudak coming on to punt it away to Pigo. He gets a great punt off this time. Pigo backing up to his own 30, trying to elude a tackler and brought back to his own 25 when he's wrestled down by Justin Williams. We got a break in the action here in the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. Grambling State Tigers 49, Tennessee State 14. Dollar Classic. As we have a new quarterback, the freshman Gary Cooper has made his way back onto the field. Actually, he uh, started the second game of the season, as you mentioned, left with leg cramps. That's when Bruce Eugene solidified his hold on the starting position. They really like Cooper. They say he reminds them of the guy they had last year in Randy Hines. I think he's got a little bit more running ability, a little more agile than Bruce Eugene. Strong arm, like a young kid, only 17 years old. So, I mean, you know, actually they thought about red shirting him and, uh, you know, just the, he had such a great fall camp. Doug felt like he'd be a great chance for him right. to learn it on, on the job action. So he's been out there, see what his numbers are. And again, a lot of that came in that first game, or second game, I should say, against uh, Alcorn. Second down and six for Grambling. Is it pretty much a foregone conclusion at this point if you're Grambling, you want to run this clock down? Yeah, you want to run the clock down and you don't want to get anybody hurt. But also, the coaches want to get some of these young guys in so they can get them on film. So you can use Monday and Tuesday as, as teaching days as you know, Grambling gets ready to, to, to go on in and, and, and take on more and more opponents. I mean, they, they've got a game next week against uh, Langston College out of, out of Oklahoma to be, you know, at Grambling. So certainly they, they'll probably be favorite to win that ball game at home. And so you get on the road. Here we go, here we go. Getting some guys in action. Everybody likes to play. Third down and five. They'll stay on the ground. Guess what? They may have a first down after that rush. Actually, uh, Lindsey Sanders, the running back, the freshman from Baker, Louisiana. Able to bull his way. He's very elusive. Just a freshman. Came out of an option system in high school. And he may have enough for first down, and he does. So they'll spot it at the 36-yard line, and 
Boy, what a job Doug Williams has done. Yeah, we talked about that in the pregame show. What an event that was. But you talk about Doug Williams, and I, we were talking with him yesterday, and, and I asked him, I said, is it back? Do you, does Grambling have that feel that it had when you were here? And he said, no, nah, no. When I was here, there were a lot of guys that we had that didn't have the options now to go and play at a big-time Division One school. Their only option was Grambling, and, they, and that's why we were so dominant. I mean, he was 40-6 and six yeah. as a player. 40-6, and six, won three national championships as a player. He's got two now as a football coach here grambling i mean and you got to understand doug's only been a head coach i think this is his fifth season i mean four yeah. years of grambling one year at morehouse and the interesting thing about that is every year he's coached his teams have gotten better i think morehouse was three and eight first year grambling five and six and they go ten and two ten and one so you know i guess this year he goes what eleven and one or something right yeah it gets better so i mean that's yeah you know, that's fantastic for grambling and, and like you mentioned earlier during uh, black college football in general you know when you look Look at the SWAC this year. You talk about the East Jackson State supposed to be the team to beat, but a lot of people think Southern yeah. will be competitive with Grambling this year. Well, they've this got you class may be the best one in years. They've got Michael Hayes back, the wide receiver that was out last season due to a knee injury, and Pete Richardson always has a you know a tough defense and, and, and a dog day afternoon down there in Southern. So uh, yeah, Southern's going to be a good team, and don't forget about Alabama State, LC Coles and his crew. Third down and seven play and a, a big run that time by, uh, I believe that was Delvin Lewis, who uh, actually, no, that was number 32, Lindsey Sanders. Nice who, uh, block, a little trap right there, a hole right there, Lindsey Sanders getting some time. Only a freshman, as you mentioned, you know, a guy that's got the great potential to do things. That Ford Expedition could have driven through that hole. No, no question. No, I mean, no question about it. Well, that's the roadies vehicle. Exactly. Right? Well, where they roadies are. That hole just... was huge. <laughs> first and ten as they get first down on the play. Gary Cooper's yet to throw the ball, and again it's Sanders, the freshman, getting some work and running back, and the clock continues to tick down. 5:35 left in the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. As we mentioned for Tennessee State, uh, it has been a tough beginning to the season. They will drop to one in three, five of their first six games on the road. And next week, as you mentioned, Stan, they head to Atlanta to take on a FAMU team. They lost their, their opener to a MEAC team in South Carolina State. They've played four SWAC teams this yeah. year. Yeah. And uh, next week they go back into the MEAC and try to handle those Rattlers who are very good this year. Buddy Pete, a new football coach down in South Carolina State, taking over for another legendary coach and, and Willie Jeffries. And, uh, and South Carolina State's going to be the MEAC. The MEAC race is going to be very tough because you've got Florida a and Hampton's playing very good. Joe Taylor does a great job all the time. Coach Hayes, Bill Hayes at A&T, you know they're going to be good. And uh, they were upset early in the season, the first game in overtime. North Carolina oh, Central. yeah, there's Big a lot win. of bragging yeah. rights going on in yeah. Raleigh. Big win for Rudy <laughs> Abrams in Central, but uh, upset, and since then, a t has been playing much better football, so you can spend it. And don't forget about Bethune-Cookman and BCC and Coach Wy Alvin Wyatt. They're good. There are some black Howard, ballers. Howard, <laughs> Morgan State, both new coaches. You know, they got some growing to go. They'll, they'll be okay. They'll yeah. be okay. For, that was for our spot. Yeah. Howard guy. Howard guy. Howard guy. Howard yeah. Nichols, uh, graduate, uh, played, actually played for the Howard baseball team Dale State you know Ben Black and all his crew they're gonna be they're gonna be better you know they're gonna be better Morgan State's got a new guy so look at Doug Williams he's still not quite relaxed still you see the intensity out there he's still doing some coaching gotta keep coaching gotta keep coaching well they came up short on that fourth down play so it's time to punt and you see James Reese on the other end, still coaching his guys. They want he wants them to fight to the end. But you never want your kids to give up. And, and you as a coach have got to be the first believer. So as long as you're playing, as long as like I said, you're keeping score, there's something positive that can happen out on the football field. At 415, you want guys to play well. Ball start on the offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Look at him, still talking technique. <laughs> this is what you need to do. Tell it as young freshman. But well, you don't want bad habits. You, you, know, you don't want the guys to pick up bad habits. Even in a big, big win, a blowout win, you still want to work on the things that you practice day after day after day. 
Yanez nearly got it blocked, and he went down, and there's a flag on the play. Carlos Wright, the guy, fumble on the punt. We got all kinds of action on that play. I believe Jenkins was able to recover the uh, fumble, but uh, that's going to be a penalty against Tennessee State, roughing the punter. So, uh, you see Jenkins, the, uh, the senior from Miami, Florida. He's had a rough day on special teams. Fifth year senior, a captain last week. Had a 51 yard touchdown reception. But tonight, uh, the blue and red has really had a hard time dealing with the black and gold. They got to be tired. Yeah. The band. I mean, they, they've been stepping. <laughs> I mean, they're just still playing. Listen, uh, got rough the, rough the kicker over here. Got the fans over here. The all set. Now. He's the official. He's of tired too. He was saying Tennessee State Grambling. He was saying over here. Over here. Over here. You figure it out. You watching the game. You figure it out. Casey Pennington said, "Look, man, we got four minutes and four seconds to go. These guys over here had a penalty. Let's get on with it. Yeah, over here and over there. So let's just do it again. Let's have a do-over. Well, they pick up." 10 yards, that's not enough to give them the first down, so they're going to have to uh, <laughs> we're going to have to punt again, and Yanez gets off a good one this time. I believe it's going to get out of bounds at about the 24-yard uh, line. So 3.56 left in this one. The inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. Over 22,000 showed up to see Grambling and Tennessee State. To see the great traditional powers in black college football and Stan Luter, I had a chance to talk with James Reese before the game, and I asked him about this scheduling situation, five of your first six on the road, and you touched upon it at halftime with the Grambling Athletic Director. These are some of the predicaments that some schools have to go through in order to meet budget. Well, not only that, but also in, in Tennessee State's case, they're in the OVC, so it's not a, a historically black conference, and I like what Mr. Dennis said, that, you know, keeping some of the traditions that they right. have. And, I mean, you know, no disrespect to, to some of the schools in the OVC, the Austin Pays and Tennessee Martins, but Grambling, Tennessee State evokes memories of the past. Right. And what a great game this is when we sit John Merritt. Eddie Robinson play. They play Florida a and The legendary coach Jay Gaither you got the great bands. This is a good ball game for everybody. The city of Las Vegas. So what was it? Right. Twenty-two thousand plus. Yeah, twenty-two thousand five. It's been a very good weekend. Yeah, it's been a great week. Three minutes, twenty-two seconds left to go. Play action. Deep pass across the middle. Had it. Kind of typifies the night for Tennessee State. They've had their opportunities. Carlos Wright, the intended receiver. <laughs> and there we, we see some teeth, finally, by uh, Doug Williams. Job well done for his uh, Grambling State Tigers. And, man, they, you have to wonder, can they be beat in black college football? They've got to still play Jackson State. And as you said, they, you know, the, the meat of their schedule is still there. Alabama State, they've got to play. They've got to play Jackson. They've got to play Southern. I mean, they're, they're teams that are capable of, of beating this Grambling team. But you need to bring your A game when you do so. Texas Southern, not a bad squad. Screen play underneath. It's Jenkins. He's got all kinds of room. Down the sideline still, and he goes out of bounds. And that's Kevin Hollis who actually caught that pass. Talking Both about. of them short guys. One wears 18, one wears 19. I got to explain that one away. <laughs> well, you know, again, some success that Tennessee State had early in the football game, throwing the underneath screen, then letting those good wide receivers take off with the football. That time, Jenkins just gets the ball and runs. And if he had cut back, been a little more patient with the football, he may have been able to take that to the house. That's Got Hollis. A little impatient. He didn't do it. That's Hollis, wasn't it? That was Hollis. Yeah. He called his name early in the ball game. That's exactly. Right. Yeah. So Kenny Irby will hand off underneath. This time it's uh, Charles Anthony. Two minutes and 50 seconds left in counting. 
Yeah, we're talking about Grambling. I mean, next week, as we mentioned, they play Langston College, and you know, game it. You know, at Grambling, they should 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 be the favorite in Prairie View in the State Fair Classic. Take a week off to Arkansas Pine Bluff, a team that's had some big wins already this season. And then you get into Jackson State, Texas Southern. So, you know, there's some big games yet to be played by this Grambling State football team. Steve Farmer in motion. Quarterback pulled down Kenny Irby. It looked like it was a broken play. Bad exchange, I believe. Cedric Young was able to bring him down. Yeah, he got a new quarterback, new center. Yeah. You got to get that ball in there, tucked in. But a good job catching the ball, keeping pace. Maybe try to turn it into a yard or so. Mentioned this is the first time these two teams met since 1993 when they played in the Southern Heritage Classic. And uh, when Tennessee State went to the new conference, uh, kind of disrupted their scheduling with Grambling. They first met in 1950. Hard hit that time. Big play as the Tigers Antoine Smith picks up another sack. Antoine Smith had a nice football game. We've called his name several times. Making plays at that D spot and also coming in on the blitz. Watch him from his outside linebacker spot. Come busted into your screen. Boom. Take that. Minute 15 to go. Grambling with a dominant performance. 49 to 14. Kenny Irby in some mop up duty. Tennessee State heads to Atlanta next week. Irby's got a man knocked away at the last second. Denmark Reed in on the play. That's about Denmark Reed's fourth deflection of the football game. Again, probably beat if Irby's able to throw this ball, put a little more in him. He's got time. Good arm there. Get that ball outside a little bit more to the pylon. That could have been six. But what I like about Denmark Reed, his ability to make up ground, comes there at the end and makes a deflection and gets the Grambling defense off the field. They say, hey, 49-14, we'll give up 14 points. We'll get a win. Doug will smile. Everybody goes back to Louisiana. There's his little son, Williams, on the back of his jersey. He's going to be a quarterback one day, yeah. win a Super Bowl, and everybody is going to be happy. And that's the only guy that's able to catch a pass from Doug Williams these days, his little son, DJ. <laughs> the band playing there you know i mean they're, they're running how many how many know what i don't like to be a band director wait a minute i think they're calling the timeout as they, they want to hear the song that's why you know what they're putting their backup quarterback their third stringer kevin barberry the uh, freshman from texas yeah from Nederland, texas so they wanted to make sure he had the play and perhaps he was confused as they call a timeout get a chance to get him in there well, what, yeah well you know 40 52 seconds call x right slant go and just kind of run the ball but I need to talk to these band directors. Because, I mean, they've been playing for like five hours. To be sure they run out of songs. <laughs> wouldn't, you, wouldn't you think that they'd be out of music by now? Or they play the same song? Uh, they played I don't a couple. I think they've I mean, played is, a couple twice. Do you twice. call down to the press box and ask for requests? They have played a couple twice. I, I, I didn't you know. know. I, I, know. I mean, I, I, you know, I've, I've never really I gotta pay attention to that kind of stuff. It'd be a tuba no, player. Uh, you've heard both bands. Who do you think's won the battle of the band? There ain't no way I'm touching oh, it. I'll touch oh, the here football we go. game. I'll talk about the game. You want to talk I'm about it? I'm going to talk about it. I want to go. of opinions on football. I got to go. What's to get political Look, about the pay bands. Me. You ain't paying me enough for that now. Oh, <laughs> I got to get back home. I got to go to Tennessee State game. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Tennessee State Grambling band's better than yours. And then go to Grambling tell them? No, 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 no. So uh, you won't? Uh, you won't I was born on a day, play. but not yesterday. All right? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they both play elegant music. There's music to my ears. Well, let's see. Uh, Mark Barry. <laughs> Mark Barry is going to get some handoff duty here. I can't believe you were so uh, political. Let's take a look at our Las Vegas play of the game. It's towards the end of the second half, and uh, the guy, the, my MVP in this game, is certainly Tremont Douglas. It's the Las Vegas play of the game, that 59-yard touchdown reception, and just kind of took the life out of Tennessee State as Grambling went in to halftime with a 35-7 lead, and they go on to polish it off, 49-14, to the final tonight. And I think we've had our last play 
and as the lovely Nicole Watson from NBC Sports graces us with her presence at the end of this football game, remember the name Bruce Eugene, a star in the future for Grambling oh, State oh, and Tremont Douglas. Damn game. Nicole and her friend up here, this graceness made this press box even better looking than it was. I know, I thought we were going to get a chance to work with Nicole <laughs> tonight, but uh, apparently, uh, you know, she's big time. She's working with the A-team. 49 Anywhere in the cold goes, it's the 18. All right, always remember that. We've just upgraded ourselves because the cold. Exactly. And a friend. And a girlfriend. <laughs> people know you're here. Well, this one is history, Stan. <laughs> final tick of the clock is over 49 14. The final score. James Reese and his Tigers will have to go back to the drawing board. They fall to one and three. And that man, Doug Williams, increases his record to 3-1. 49-14 will be the final score of the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic. Back to wrap it up right after this. It's Doug Williams, 49-14. His Grambling State Tigers get it done here in the inaugural Silver Dollar Classic here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hey! The next game will be a CIAA game on October 5th, Fayetteville State at Winston-Salem State. That game to begin at 2 p.m. Eastern. Check your local listings. So that's going to do it here from Las Vegas for Stan Luter. I'm Darren Horton saying so long from Las Vegas. Good night, everybody.